Welcome everyone to Woody Hayes Field on the campus of Harrison Trimble High School in Moncton, New Brunswick for the 2016 Moncton Mustangs home opener versus the Nova Scotia Buccaneers. I'm Vince Williams and joining me momentarily, my broadcast partners, Peter Camo and Jeff Reith. The Stangs come in today's game 1-1-1. One, one, and one. On the road, they started their season and they were able to defeat the PEI Privateers. Then up next, they were able to capture lightning in a bottle in the fourth quarter and tie a game on the road versus the Capital Area Gladiators. And finally, finishing up on the road where they fell to the three-time Maritime Football Champions, the St. John Monitors. So, the Stangs and the Bucks getting ready here at Woody Hayes Stadium and the guys are making the call. Peter and Jeff are standing by. Fellas? Jeff Reith in the booth. You got Vince Williams down on the field. And Jeff, it's uh, senior football. Uh, a lot of these guys have CIS AUS experience. Uh, it's normally played at a very high caliber. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's been a great league over the number of the last number of years. And uh, we've actually got a couple of guys in the field that have got CFL foot experience as well. Uh, these guys uh, are out there playing the game seriously. It's not a, it's not a gentleman's league. It, it really is a serious uh, league that they're looking to try to uh, uh, advance through the system and, and uh, win a championship at the end of it. And we have the uh, Moncton Mustangs will be in their ever-familiar black with red trim uniforms. And the Buccaneers from Nova Scotia will be in the white jerseys with dark pants. Uh, Mustangs will be kicking off, uh, back returning uh, for... The Buccaneers. Just like it's uh, John Perot and uh, uh, I'd have to say Brandon Keating. Yeah, back returning. Then kickoff, and we're underway. Kickoff was by Adam Shea. It's returned there by John Perot. He gets up to about the 24, 25 yard line. It'll be first and 10 Buccaneers on their own 25. Derek Bourgeois was the one that uh, brought him down in the end uh, by the Mustangs. Uh, uh, plays linebacker and ori originally out of Odyssey. So it'll be interesting to see what we uh, see what uh, Halifax comes out with initially. Uh, the way that the, the senior game works uh, is they typically play four downs and, and uh, they like to uh, pass and run a fair amount. And it looks like we've got 10-man ball today. Uh, the, some of the teams do play 12-man, but it all depends on the size of the roster. So there are some modifications when playing 10-man football. So it's basically uh, center with uh, two uh, guards, uh, two wide outs, uh, two slot backs, and two receivers as well as the quarterback. And the first play, they go right to the air. And a little look-in pass is off the mark. And that is uh, quarterback Alan Wetmore, longtime veteran of the league, Acadia uh, University graduate, the incomplete will be second and 10. Yeah, and Alan, Alan's been around for quite a while. He's been here since the inception of the league, and he's a player a player coach, actually. He is the head coach for, uh, for Halifax. Uh, Alan's got uh, one of those uh, deep ingrained needs to, to always compete. I was talking before the game, I said, so how much longer are you gonna play? And he goes, well, until my quarterback's ready to step in, actually. <laughs> said, well, that's, that's not a bad, uh, a bad end, re end result. So second and 10, Buccaneers, their own 26 yard line. First pass was incomplete. Wetmore now goes into a shotgun situation. The rush, the ball's in the air, throws it over the top. Receiver is open just out of the reach of number 88, or number 80, Brandon Keating. Tyler Cameron was uh, the covering uh, halfback on that uh, case. He was in a good spot. Uh, the ball was just slightly out of his hands, like, uh, like you say. Uh, you'll notice, too, when we're playing the 10-man ball, that uh, the rushing from the uh, defensive line, it has to come within uh, a certain distance from the end of the guard. They can't come hard from the outside. So that's, that's one of the modifications. So although it may look like it's easy to get in the backfield, they can only come from within the box. So third and 10 as they play four down football, but more in the gun position again for the Buccaneers. He's got a good snap. And a catch. No, the ball came out of his hands there, Peter. I don't think they're gonna give that him to him as a catch. So it looks like we'll see a punt team come up. And we do wanna make mention on the Mustangs, longtime Mustang, number 15, Stevie Cormier. Uh, Stevie on the defensive side of the ball uh, this time. Now Steve actually did play linebacker back in his high school days. I coached him uh, back in the mid 90s. And uh, every once in a while he'd come in there at an outside linebacker. So it's not a, not a brand new role to him, but it's not one he's been done for a number of years. So Mo Roussel back to uh, get the punt for the Mustangs. 
It was a three and out situation. Buccaneers, first time on offense. And there's all kinds of room on the field, Jeff, with 10 players. So the opportunity for big returns and specials is obviously there. Looks like Roussel will settle under the ball. Takes a bounce back towards the Buccaneer line of scrimmage. It's good for, uh, good for Moncton, for sure. And they get the ball to about the 39-yard line. Flag on the play, probably no yards. Yeah, you normally see them blow that dead when it comes down in, in the midst of a big crowd like that. Uh, it's a safety issue. You don't want anybody that's looking up all of a sudden getting teed off on. So, But the referees are tend, will tend to allow the big guys play the, uh, play the actual game and try to keep the, the flags off the field. And the ball was fielded by uh, Mustangs number 91, Felix LeBlanc. So it is first and 10 Mustangs on the Buccaneers, a 40-yard line. A uh, little bit of a breeze here. Uh, actually, five-yard penalty for no yards, so it moves to the 35. A little bit of a breeze against the Buccaneers. So we'll see what the offense has. It was interesting the Buccaneers didn't even try to run. I suspect that Moncton will actually run more than pass, but it's hard to say. Dan Comfort's got some good experience having played for Mount A. So Comfort, first play, is a run. Looks like about a four-yard gain. That was to Robbie Chevrolet. Robbie's from Moncton High, originally played for the, the Purple Knights a number of years ago, but he's also uh, played junior ball in the past, and he's played some senior ball as well, but he, he's been out of it for a few years. Uh, I was talking to uh, the coach before the game, and he said he was pleased to see Robbie come out and uh, try, to, uh, try to compete at this level again, and it looks like he's doing well. And uh, tackle on that play was Andrew Folk, linebacker for the Buccaneers. Just a quick timeout. Uh, there's a, any blood showing on any of the players, you immediately have to leave the field. You're allowed to be prepared to come back on. They'll switch now, so another player comes on. It was about a two-yard gain. It'll be second and eight. Ball spotted at about the 32-and-a-half-yard uh, line of the Buccaneers. Uh, first play was a running play. Uh, Moncton uh, has pride in their O-line. You'll see that they have a 10-man system, but still go with four offensive linemen and only have one slot back. So it's a little more of a, a grinded-out type of an offense. Let me see the run again there, Peter. That right. was number uh, 34, Aubrey Ellis. Let's go. Come on now. Tackled right. on the play by number 28, Sam Richard, or Richard, I should say. It'll be third down and long. Now, Aubrey actually played at Mount A as well. Like you mentioned, uh, at, during the warm-up there, there's, there's a lot of guys here with CIS experience, and Aubrey played all four years at Mount A. So they're looking to his leadership from time to time is, uh, is what uh, the coach tells me. So it was third and long. There's the fake, a roll up by the quarterback. That was a nice fake too. He really put the ball down hard. A nice pass. That looks like Tory Hicks with the uh, place tight end. The defender, Jeff, had to make a choice. Either rush the quarterback or stay with the receiver. He chose the quarterback, making the receiver wide open. Yeah, well, two runs in a row, and he gave the exact same sort of action there. He opened up the same direction. He looked like he put the ball in the basket of the running back. He really had the linebacker bite hard on it. And as he peeled out, and you'll see that Comfort will peel out every time. Even though he's giving the ball away, he's making that play action action so that the Halifax will be able to key on him. So first and goal to go. The Mustangs inside. Buccaneers 10-yard uh, line on about the eight. Comfort in a pistol, short formation. There's a quick run. That's Aubrey. He gets down to the goal line, oh, not the, in. The ball came out right at the end. It looks like they might be calling that a fumble, and if so, Halifax came up with it. We'll see what they're calling. I mean, they're, they're holding a spot, but they haven't indicated anything yet. Okay, now they're indicating second down. So Aubrey Ellis gets down to the one-yard line for the Mustangs. Again, second and goal. So the referee, the, the linesman over here, the head linesman, must have felt that the, the ground caused the fumble as opposed to any sort of action by the defensive player. So the player was down. And here's a play you normally put the pride of your old line in play with uh, a power offense. Comfort goes underneath the center. Takes the quarterback sneak, and it's a touchdown Mustang. So a good opening drive for the Moncton Mustangs as they open up their home opener. Yeah, it was nice to see that. That was a complete offensive package. We saw a number of runs that had some uh, some good success. Uh, we saw a real nice pass after a play action, uh, and then two runs carry the carry the rock into the end zone. And one thing that uh, we were told before the game too is the special teams uh, haven't had a long time to gel so far this summer. So. These extra points can be really key. We'll see what happens here. And there's number 84, Adam Shea, in for the convert. Ball is down, good, good protection. And it counts, so uh, Mustang, 7-0 with 10-11 left here in the first quarter at uh, Woody Hayes Memorial Field on Harrison Trimble 
as Vince said, campus. Yes, that's right, campus. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure all the the teachers would like to be called professor and, and be given Getting their paid tenor. Accordingly. <laughs> one of the, one of the things that's really nice about this field. It, uh, this, this was one of the, the three fields that were built actually in Moncton pending the, uh, the World Soccer coming here a couple of summers ago. They needed practice facilities for all the teams that were in town and so there was a significant amount of funding poured in and uh, they were able to turn that into a turf field here as was uh, McNaughton High School as well. Well I tell you it's an awful fortunate situation where a, a world event comes to town and some of the high schools were able to benefit or reap the rewards like you said. Right now, Moncton, uh, you know, with uh, two high schools with the turf fields, as well as Rocky Stone, so uh, it's great on them. There's Shea kicking off for the Mustangs. He angles it to the sideline. It'll stay inside. It actually gets by. He mishandled that. Brandon Keating, and now he's off to the races, and he runs into the Mustangs inside his own 20, so a great special teams cover there. And it was Derek Bourgeois again on the tackle. Uh, he had the tackle in the opening kickoff as well. So first and 10, Buccaneers, their second offensive possession here in the game. And they'll start maybe in the not comfortable area of their own 17-yard uh, line. So first and 10, Buccaneers. At hazard to guess, we're going to see a little bit of run this time. They did three passes on their first, uh, their first series, and they didn't get, it, get anywhere with it. Uh, so Halifax has always been a bit of a, a mix-it-up team. I was surprised not to see any run prior, but here we see them in an eye formation. So I would suspect we're going to see a run here. And Wetmore again still quarterbacking, playing coach. There's the handoff, runs right inside, but not much blocking there. Stopped at the line of scrimmage by number 26, Paul Best of the Best Brothers football franchise. I think it's the easy way to say that. There's four of them that played. <laughs> so it's second down, no gain on the play. So it'll be second and 10, Buccaneers. It's a little surprised to see that play actually, Peter. When we're playing 10-man football, the outside edges is what you actually have that, that you can take advantage of, because they, they stack the box, right? Because you can't come from outside the box. You're gonna have six or seven guys in there, and he ran right between the center and the guard as opposed to trying to get to the outside. So second and long, and eye formation now. They have a tight end in this offensive set for the Buccaneers, Wetmore again still quarterback. Runs toss to the weak side, short side of the field. Gets positive yards, but not a lot. It'll be second and about five. And that, but that goes to show you what uh, what we were just talking about. It, it's it's much better. Oh, uh, a last a, a flag coming out at the end. That can only mean somebody was chattering at somebody and saying something unpleasant. I'm sure. So ball carrier was number 32, Joe Stuckless, for the Buccaneers. Uh, flag like uh, Jeff mentioned, late, and is talking to both teams. So it might be. Uh, Maybe they're just setting the parameters of how the game's going to be played. Well, they're, they're talking both captains, yeah. So we'll, we'll see what uh, what happens here. They're not doesn't look like they're moving the sticks at all. So. And I'd say, uh, Jeff, we're looking at a fairly historic moment there. We got Stevie Cormier, longtime veteran <laughs> superstar for the Mustangs, talking with Alan Wetmore, longtime superstar uh, with uh, Team Nova Scotia out of Halifax. Both of those gentlemen have an awful lot of senior MVP awards over the years for sure and it's nice to see Stevie back I mean Stevie's been away for about four years now uh, and I was talking when the offseason he said you know Jeff I'm just getting too old for this game and I coached him in high school so that what, what's that make me <laughs> well I don't think there was turf fields then <laughs> no there was no turf fields then so third down about four yards to go for the Buccaneers it was a gain of about six offsetting penalties both uh, objectionable conduct Ball is going to the air Wetmer with the throw, catch, and out of bounds. It is a first down. Catch on the play, Brandon Keating. That was uh, that was a nice little pass. I mean, all he did is he found the first yard marker, gave it a couple more yards for, for good measure, and, and turned it on the out. And Wetmore was, was, the ball was in the air at the cut. So, I mean, that's that's what you want to see when, you, when you've got a passing game. So the first first down of the Buccaneers gets them out to their own 27-yard line, first and 10. Again, 10-man football, you have a center, two guards, uh, Buccaneers option with uh, two slot backs, two wide outs. And uh, defensively, it's basically a double tackle with linebackers in tight for the Mustangs. Wetmore Three. at quarterback underneath the center. Oh, a double play action, he tries to dump it off. He had a receiver in the area, if he'd just been able to get to the outside a little bit, but uh, I mean, Wetmore was under a lot of pressure there. And Paul Best was applying the pressure for the Mustangs. It's great to see Paul back out. I saw him before the game, and, and you can see him 
he's, he's spinning his hands. If you can see him on the field there right now, and, and he's looking for somebody to come in and give him a sub because I said, so how much are you going to play out there? He goes, not much, coach, not much. <laughs> so second down, 10 yards to go for the Buccaneers, trying to get a little bit of offense going. Wetmore under the center again. I formation with the running back, double slot, double wide out. Looks like the Mustangs are playing a zone defense. That's why that underneath zone is so open uh, so far in this game. But uh, we'll see how they adjust as the game goes on. Here's the throw by Wetmore. A little slant in from the outside receiver. It looks additionally like he could have had a first down yardage depending on where they spot the ball. That's a tough pattern to cover, especially if you're playing his own defense because the corner's got to be looking. Uh, he's he's got to react going deep, and the halfback's got to slide out. And when the wide receiver comes in that quick little slant, it's typically right behind the halfback, but well in front of the corner. So typically you see a completed pass. So we're gonna measure this, it looks like. So we will have a measurement. Now from my eye right here, I would say they've got it, but uh, we'll, we'll see what happens when they bring the, uh, the sticks out. Well, I think the original catch and run, I think he had first down yardage and maybe taking that and just going down with a dive forward because he wasn't going to get much more than that, the Mustangs defense. Uh, obviously playing zones, you have bodies on, you know, outside leverage on both over the top. So there's not really a whole lot of a whole lot of go, but now it's going to be a measurement for the Buccaneers to keep the drive live. And when you measure the football, real, realistically, it just extends another play because normally it's within the yards the team normally goes. That's right. Now, talking to uh, uh, Coach Terrace before the game, I asked him what they wanted to try to accomplish with this game. And, and, yeah, and it is a first down. Um, asked him what he wanted to try to accomplish in this game and of course he said I'd like to get a victory out of it but one of the key things we want to try to work on is, is cutting down a little bit on some of our defensive miscues and he did specifically mention that the coverages uh, seem to be suffering a little bit uh, younger players different personnel in those spots and it's uh, when you're playing 10 man like we mentioned before this the field is wide open and it's awfully tough to cover off uh, five receivers with 10 man football uh, so we're seeing Halifax take advantage of that right at the moment, and we'll, we'll see what happens as the game progresses. So first and 10 Buccaneers on their own 43-yard line. Wetmore goes under center again in a double-I situation for both slot backs. But you say 10-man football, there's an awful lot of room to move out there. You see uh, Mustangs have five defenders inside what they call the box area. Wetmore on the ball and the hip runs a little bit of a counter play. And uh, Stevie Cormier, as well as Derek Bourgeois, stuffed that out. Yeah, they, they stayed home and they sniffed it out real well. That's tough on defense, especially when the, when the quarterback rolls and he opens up away from where the run is going. Linebackers want to step hard to where that quarterback is first looking, right? Where the eyes are and that's where they want to go. Uh, but both of, those, uh, both of those guys, including Stevie, they stayed home and they sniffed it out real quick. And Stuckless, number 32 on the carry for the Buccaneers. Now second down. That was about a two-yard gain. It'll be second and eight. Ball right at the 45 yard line. Buccaneers so far with one first down. So they're a little bit of an offensive drive they've got going here as we have about six minutes left in the first quarter. But more back to the pass under a little bit of offensive pressure. He throws back over the middle. Oh. And that is picked off. Derek Bourgeois for the Mustangs with an interception. The ball will be fielded on the 46 yard line. First and 10 Mustangs. And that's when the zone works really well for you because. As Wetmore was dropping back and as he was trying to imagine where his receiver is going to be in space and he's trying to, do, he's trying to get away from that defensive end, he's going to now throw to where he thinks somebody is without being able to pick him out real quick. And when you're playing zone defense in a case like this, Bourgeois just stayed home, stayed at the top of his box and waited for things to develop and, and it was in his hands. Well, if you play zone right, you almost look like the intended receiver on an interception, which is how it looked there with Bourgeois capitalizing. So first and 10 Mustangs. Offense on the Buccaneers' 45-yard uh, line. They still come out with a four-man offensive line, so they have a tight end and play one slot back, two wide outs in a pistol situation. Wow, they, they even pulled a guard on that. 64 pulled. Didn't do any good in the end. We see a loss of yards there, but uh, uh, it's, it's neat to see them pulling that uh, tight end back across the line. Aubrey Ellis with the carry, a loss on the play. They'll be second down and about 16 yards to go as the ball gets pushed back to the 51 yard line of the Buccaneers. I would hazard a guess we'll see a passing play here. I, I reserve the right to be wrong, but uh, uh, Comfort is a, an accomplished uh, quarterback as, as far as being able to throw and, and find his receivers in open space. So the Buccaneers defense backing on there. Said Comfort in the air. 
She goes right through Miss Receiver, potential interception there by uh, Devon Taylor, but it uh, goes incomplete. It'll be third down and 16. Yeah, it's almost like uh, the receiver, Chris Brown, was supposed to cut to the outside where the ball was, was going towards. Um, and you see, it, sometimes you pay attention to the body language afterwards. You see the quarterback and the receiver looking at them, and they, they sort of shrug their shoulders a little bit. So you know that there was something that was an expectation that didn't quite come to pass. So third and long. It'd be interesting if uh, the Mustangs have a draw in their scenario. And they run toss to the corner with uh, Aubrey Ellis. He does have room. He's got a long way to go, and he gets tripped up just at the last second. It's not going to be enough, though, Peter. And that's uh, Mitch Kays with that trip up. It'll be fourth down and about four yards to go. Ball on the 39-yard line. And it looks like they're going to go for it. Yeah, it looks like they're keeping their starting offense in. And it's it's nice to, to be in this position, right? They got there because of an interception. Uh, it, it's really like a free set, a series of downs. So in the same formation, we just saw offset backfield, uh, comfort in a pistol situation. Balls in play, he's going right to the air. Steve Fox with the catch. He does get to the line of scrimmage. He's still on his feet, he's losing a lot of yards. So I'm not exactly sure where they're gonna spot the ball, but it's I don't think he's gonna get the first down based on. His forward progress has taken him right there, and, and the referee, the back judge, has got a point up, up by the 40, uh, 35 yard line. So we'll see. Yeah. Now they're gonna say that he it was his own action that took him backwards. So first and 10 Buccaneers as a failure to gain against the Mustangs. They'll be on uh, just inside their own 40 yard line. So uh, we've seen that twice, Jeff, where receiver had the positive yards and they gave up the yards trying to make something more out of it. And I think the idea is understand down and distance. Yeah, absolutely. Get what you absolutely need and move on from there. Yeah, uh, and Fox had the down and distance. All he had to do is actually go down at that point. But sometimes the receiver, they, they see the open field or they think they can get away with a little bit more. And so if they back up under their own power, if they change direction, that's when the referee will then remark where their forward progress is. That's, that's too bad. So first and 10 Buccaneers resetting the offense. It is the their base formation, I formation, two slots, two wideouts. Wetmore quarterback, straight dive handoff. He runs right into the defense, captured there by Steve Cormier, as well as Brandon Caldwell. No gain, it'll be second and long. And Brandon played for the uh, Seawolves as well. Uh, so you get a couple of guys here that have played for other teams in uh, the junior leagues as well as the senior leagues. Uh, and it's, it's, it's interesting to see them gel with a team. Uh, but Brandon is originally from Moncton, but uh, he's played for the UMBSJ uh, Seawolves as well in the last couple of years. Second and nine is a one yard gain. Was given to Joe Stuckless there on that carry. Ace backfield, a little bit of a tight end situation. Steve Cormier is in a down end position on the defensive line and off he goes. He was in the backfield fast. There's a hard run by Stuckless and he does get the first down. Tackled on the play by Tyler Cameron, holding on to his jersey, but not until first down yards were gained. First and 10 Buccaneers on the 53 yard line. He dragged him for at least seven yards. I mean, strong grip strength to stay onto the jersey, but you didn't do much to bring him down. Uh, that's the, he just kept his legs pumping as running back. Well, I think it was almost the right play for the right defensive call as Stevie Cormie, the defensive rush end, went in and the ball went around on the outside. But a great run by Stuckless there, first and 10 Buccaneers. So you see the Mustangs back in a more traditional set with the two big guys in the down spots and, and Stevie in an upright. Go back to basically the same play. Again, that's Stuckless with great room on the outside. 15-yard gain or 14-yard gain. It'll be first and 10. What made that happen is the wide receivers for Halifax, they stock blocked and ran their corner and their halfback at 15 to 20 yards down the field. So we see here on the, on the replay, those receivers are running those defenders backwards 10 to 15 yards down the field, and that's what opens that up. Easy trucking for the Buccaneers as the first time they cross into Mustangs territory. About a minute and a half left here in the first quarter. Ball on the 41-yard line of the Mustangs. First and 10. Buccaneers stay with the same formation, ace backfield with an H back, which is kind of like an offset tight end. One slot back, two wideouts. They had success running this play. See, the Mustangs are starting to key on that H back side. Uh, we're going to see uh, procedure on here. I think that's going to be coming back. Wow. Still on his feet. I've not ever seen Stevie get knocked, <laughs> knocked backwards like that going in for, uh, for a tackle. I think that's coming back, though, Peter. I think that was uh, movement on the offensive line. So that might save a big play against the Mustangs, but take away a big play 
for the Buccaneers as there is early motion on the offensive line. So that'll move the ball back. It is procedure as we're looking at the head referee, Bill Pickerel. And that'll uh, negate a big gain on uh, slot around by the Buccaneers. Yeah, we're really seeing uh, the Buccaneers uh, mix it up a little bit more now. We're seeing a couple other guys get into the action. Um, and it, it's paying dividends for them. I and mean, they're over into uh, Mustangs territory and uh, driving for a score. So the ball gets pushed back five yards. First and 15 now for the Buccaneers. Ball spotted on the 47-yard line of the Mustangs. Uh, Buccaneers showing uh, great offensive drive this week. Yeah, I think Mustangs have to have to realize where their keys are at this point. They're, they're relying heavily on where the H-back is, and, and I think Wet Wetmore saw that and went away from the H-back that last time, and if it wasn't for the penalty, they would have had another first down there. So H-back now to the left of the offensive formation for the Buccaneers. First and 15, they run toss. Wow, it's Jesse Wembold. He gets uh, just beyond the line of scrimmage. It was second down and about... Uh, 13 yards to go, ball just crosses over the 45. It's, uh, it's We see it here on the, the replay. Too bad he didn't see the vision where the block was because he had a real nice lane, but he ends up coming back into the, the bulk of the defense. Uh, there was some great blocking by Halifax there to the outside, and if he had just followed on the butt end of his blocker, he would have been gone. Uh, but he, he turned it back in and, and uh, met the, the Mustangs uh, muscle for muscle there. So second and long for the Buccaneers. They go back to their traditional offensive set. Alan Wetmore, head coach and quarterback right now, as mentioned, waiting for his quarterback to get off the IR list, I guess. Going right to the air, comes to his right, finds the receiver down the field, puts it in, but the receiver slipped and fell, not able to complete the pattern, so it goes incomplete, it'll be third and long. That's the end of the first quarter, as they're changing ends. Um, so far, I mean, the bus, both sides have shown some good offensive play. Uh, it seems that the defenses for both sides are struggling a little bit uh, to try to figure out what those uh, what those keys are, and, and uh, in order to adjust pre-snap, and they're getting uh, they're getting. Uh, okay, we're going to send it down to uh, Vince Williams down in between quarters, Vince. You said it. Both teams are struggling offensively. The defense basically staying in there. I mean, Halifax had a one and done from a four, uh, four play drive in their first drive, and they turn it over in their second drive. So you can see Halifax trying to get things going offensively, but struggling a little bit with a lot of miscues and penalties bringing plays back. On the Moncton side, Moncton doing a good job capitalizing on good field position with a 35-yard drive and a sneak by the quarterback, Dan Comfort. So a good first series for the Mustangs. Right now, the Mustangs are controlling the play. And, uh, and Peter, you mentioned the two stars of these two teams, uh, Alan Wetmore as well as Steve Cormier. Steve Cormier, a number of accolades here in this league. He's been playing for a very long time. He's been a member of the 10-year anniversary uh, all MFL team in 2010. He's got three MVP awards. He's got three outstanding running back awards. He's got a plethora of all-stars, eight all-stars including. He's a part of the team that won four championships, a four-peat for the Moncton Mustangs, the Moncton Mustangs, excuse me, coming back out of retirement and playing a position that he's not usually playing. He's usually a running back and now he's playing linebacker. He's the second leading tackler on the team. So Steve Cormier, a dominant figure in this league. Back to you guys. Vince, and uh, great job there getting us up to speed on, uh, you know, the, the, the guys that have been the heart and soul of these teams uh, because you do need a core group, and uh, Vince did mention both, you know, Alan Wetmore of the Halifax area and Stevie Cormier here have been key, key guys in that core. Yeah, and we can't forget, too, there's some other guys out there like, uh, like the best. We've got, uh, I mean, Bob Gifford, who was a longtime player and is still very involved in the team, and, and a number of other uh, people as well that uh, have stayed with the Moncton Mustangs for, for many, many years. So third and about uh, 13, 14 yards for the Buccaneers. Wetmore goes into more of a gun situation. The backs will split away. They do have the traditional two slot backs, two wideouts. And the ball is in play. Wetmore looking to put it up. He just airs it out. He's got the win. The receiver's open. And it is a touchdown. <laughs> as that was ball meets receiver stride for stride right in the end zone. That was a classic. Just run. I'll throw it up. You run under it. 
Uh, I mean, the defender was, was in a trail position the whole way, which is where you want to be. You want to be between the receiver and the quarterback so you can make a play on the ball. But in that case, the ball fell exactly where it had to be uh, when it had to be there. And the receiver did a good job, too. I mean, looking over his shoulder, tracking the ball down, and cradles that ball right into his chest. What a, what a great pass play for a touchdown that was. And he threw it with the wind. And so you have to account for the wind carrying the football. Uh, but it carried it right into the arms of the receiver. So first major score of the afternoon in the opening play of the uh, second quarter. And it's uh, convert time. And that is Joe Stuckless uh, with the convert attempt here for the Buccaneers to tie the game up. Snap's good, hold is good, ball is up, and ball is good. So a tight game now. Seven se or 27 seconds into this, uh, into this second quarter. So Peter, the name of the field, and, and those that are in the know uh, of football, uh, this, this field was named after Woody Hayes, a longtime coach of the Harrison Trimble Trojans, longtime teacher here. Uh, but he was also uh, the founding coach for the Moncton Mustangs. When the Mustangs established themselves uh, after being part of the Moncton Marshals for a number of years, they, were, they started up as the Riverview Mustangs. And they looked for a gentleman to come in and help give them some guidance during those er early years. And they made a call to uh, Woody Hayes and and Woody came out and, and coached them for, for a few years and, and actually coached them to a couple of championships. Uh, and so it's, it's very fitting to be here for a lot of reasons, and not the least of which uh, the Moncton Mustangs actually had their inaugural uh, Hall of Fame uh, this past offseason. And uh, the very first uh, entrant into the Hall of Fame is Woody Hayes. Uh, in and rightfully so. Absolutely. Uh, it's, it's hard to imagine where the Mustangs would be today if it hadn't been for Woody. And that is uh, Stuckless kicking off. Kind of a pooch kick. Nice run back developing here. He's got some blocks. He's been, oh, he comes down after all, but he looked like he had a bit of a hole there. And he got to the 35 yard. Let me first and 10 Mustangs on their own 35 yard line as they try to answer the quick score touchdown of the Buccaneers of the second quarter. Yeah, it'll be important to see how the Mustangs regroup here. Uh, it, it's hard for a defense to feel bad about that. They had them third and long. Uh, they were able to stop them a couple of key plays, and, and it was just, it was a perfect pass play. And, and you can't be too upset at yourself on the defense for that because it was a quick release. It's not even like he was scrambling. Uh, he dropped back and through launched it <laughs> through the ball. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's not much you can do against that as a defense. You just have to admire it as good football. So Comfort in a pistol situation. Still have four offensive linemen. They run the ball with the pulling guard. Wow. All kinds of room. Oh, the ball's the out. Play, but it is recovered, and I believe that is Corey. That looked like it was Chris Spence. Lehman. 61 with the recovery. I thought it was 51, Peter. Oh, I, I may one. be wrong. Yeah, no, 5 1. Spencer Esterbrooks. That's, it's really nice when your offensive lineman is still standing where he started the play and can help you out in, in such a uh, fine fashion. <laughs> and there's a penalty on the play, which will bring it first down. I didn't quite see what the call was by the referee. Hopefully we'll see it now by head ref Bill Pickerel. Unnecessary roughness against the Buccaneers. Uh, horse collar tackle, which means uh, you cannot grab uh, a offensive player carrying the ball in the upper shoulder region to make it a tackle, and it's really a safety issue. Yeah, I mean, if you get stopped that way, you, you get whiplash, and that's why they try not to uh, allow that to happen. Comfort with the throw, the slant in, and it's picked off. Wow, I was sure that he had that. Oh, and the ball came out, Peter, and it's on the turf. Devin Taylor was the interceptor for the Buccaneers as it went through the hands of Chris Brown. And then there was a fumble. It looks like the Buccaneers have maintained possession of it. We're waiting for the official call from the referee. Love to see this on replay because I didn't even, here we go on replay. And it's unfortunate because it looked like the ball was right on the mark for the pass. So Comfort passes it, he's got, a, he's got his target. And it's, oh, it goes right through his hands. Head up call for the receiver. Bit of a head hunting hit by number 44 there that I, I don't like to see. But anyways, we see the run back here. He's coming up, he's carrying the ball outside his body. Gets knocked out of his hands. And a chance to get it back. There was three Mustangs to the one Buccaneer in that fumble pile. But Buccaneers maintain possession. Be first and 10, ball on. Mustangs 51 yard line. And here comes the uh, Buccaneer offense. And I dare say we might see the same play at some point in time. Oh, well. I it throw it, you once. run. <laughs> yeah. It's just like backyard uh, football, right? Just run for the post. But uh, Wetmore in underneath the center. He runs off tackle with 
And he's still on his feet. Joe Stucklitz, he stays on his feet and gains about nine yards. And second and short, Buccaneers. And the ball on about the 42-yard line of the Mustang. Got a Mustang that's a little slow getting up. Uh, yeah, they're going to be calling the training. Looks like he's he's got a problem with his leg. He doesn't like the. There we go. Okay, he's up now. That's best. Paul Best. Paul and Francis are, are twin brothers that have played for many years for the Mustangs. Played for Ruby High before that. They're uh, then they've got two older brothers, Ben and, and Alex, who both played as well. So you called them the franchise or the the, the family franchise. The family franchise. <laughs> You can start a football team with just that group at one and point from there. That's right. At one point, actually, one of the championship years that we had here, I had all four coaching all four at the same time. Thankfully, two are on offense and two are on defense uh, because th they are the prototypical family that is highly competitive. So everything was a contest and you were never sure what was going to happen from one day to the next between the four of them. It sometimes you had to remind them that they were on the same team. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you. We, we talked about Woody Hayes uh, and, and Woody, Woody passed away a few years ago. Uh, the Mustangs did suffer a tragic loss last year at the sudden passing of, uh, of uh, a one-time uh, head coach as well uh, in, in Brian Agnew. And before the game, there was an award that was given to Robbie Chevre, uh, the inaugural uh, Brian Agnew Award for uh, support in, in the community and in, in the football uh, fraternity, which was nice to see. Um, but a couple of these guys that came back, like Steve, like Franny, these guys came back last summer. They said to me, Coach, we're going to do one more time for Brian. So it was good to see them out on the field today for sure. So second and short, Buccaneers after that nine-yard scamper by tailback. He's got the ball again, and it looks like he might have first down yards as Joey Stuckless is uh, it's awful carrying close. pay dirt. It's awful close there. They might have to measure that. They, he might eyeball that and give him the first down, but it's it's a tight one. Good defensive rush there. No, he's going to bring the, the bring the sticks in. So that's a couple measures. That's that's you know that's good for the defense. It uh, gives you a bit of a breather as well. Uh, and if if you're able to stop him here, that's that's a nice little mental nudge for the defense to have, have stopped him on such a short uh, gain attempt. But uh, this one really looks like it's going to be close if the uh, yard markers are accurate from the sideline to the field. It could be within the stripe of the football for the first down, or just uh. Not all lines are accurate. These ones look pretty good, but I. I've been on a couple of fields <laughs> where, you know, you can That's see That's normally natural turf. Yeah. Like the natural turf field are sometimes a bit wonky. Yeah. Yeah. There has been times where I was surprised. It looks like he's got it. Uh, even it, it's one of those ones, if it even that close, give it to them. Yeah, that's <laughs> you know right. I mean? <laughs> Nudge so it, it. It is a first down, so they'll uh, maintain possession drive. This is a live ball on the 41-yard line of the Buccaneers as they continue their orf offensive push into the Mustangs uh, backfield and defense and score zone. Now this is the third game for each of these teams. So they've had a number of weeks of practice and a number of games to work some kinks out. Uh, so the offenses on both sides are starting to gel. Defenses typically are a little bit of a disadvantage in 10 man ball because not only the space, uh, but it's a little quicker to the line and, and it's hard to, to get in there and, and make a stop, especially with four downs too. So Luckless again with the carry, this time he gets about two yards. I mean, second and eight as the ball crosses the 40-yard line of the Mustangs. Tackled on the play, who's having a heck of a day, is Derek Bourgeois, linebacker for the Mustangs, number 41. Yeah, he was somebody that uh, uh, the coach uh, from, the, from the Mustangs had said to keep an eye out for uh, Coach uh, Terrace, that is. Uh, he's a Derek Bourgeois, is, is a rookie this year, first time on the team, uh, but has really stepped it up and, and has stepped into a starting role and is showing leadership on the defense as well. So we're just coming up to the 11-minute mark of the second quarter it is second down about eight yards to go al wetmore quarterbacking the buccaneers doubling up as the head coach so it's not hard for the head coach to keep his head in the game when he's <laughs> on the field i would guess it's all kinds of motion nobody to blame but himself if an offensive series doesn't work wetmore keeps the ball throws over the top receiver was open oh we're gonna see gonna a flag a there interference call <laughs> against but the joel rickard for the mustangs <laughs> yeah you know, it's one of those classic things, though. You, as a DB, you're, you're covering. We see it here on the on the replay. And Allen had a great rollout. Nobody's even looking at him. He's directing his uh, short receiver, and then he goes deep. And we see Rickard knows that he's in trouble at this point. 
and he just reaches out, grabs a jersey, pulls the receiver down, and at that point, it, sure, it's a penalty, but it's not a touchdown. Not a touchdown. So it does move the sticks. It is first down for the Buccaneers. The 15-yard penalty puts the ball on about the 25-yard line of the Mustangs. I mean, the wind is, affects the drift of the ball. So even if defensively you think you have a play on it, it's going to probably move about four or five yards in the air yeah. across the field. So tough on a defensive back trying to track the ball. Regardless, a big play for the Buccaneers as they're well inside Mustang zone now. First and ten. Wetmore back to Luckless. He goes off tackle. Still on his Still feet. Still on his feet. Running hard. And he gets pushed out of bounds. Number 16, Dom Comptos. Luckless is, uh, he's running well. He's got uh, some great uh, churning legs there, and he's, he's seeing the, the field very well. And he's finding, finding that lane right between his uh, lead blockers. So first and 10, the Buccaneers go first down on a penalty. They're on about the 11-yard line. Then a first down on a great run by Stuckless. And they are knocking on the scoring door of the Mustangs. I think we're going to see uh, another rollout, and he's going to be looking either for a short receiver or his, uh, his deeper receiver. That's just a feeling I have. So he goes into the gun situation. Sends the receivers in, ball in the air, runs a corner, route, and oh. open and dropped by the receiver of the Buccaneers. In and out of his hands. That was an easy, that was an easy six points. I'm sorry. Uh, and uh, Tyler Cameron was the receiver that was trailing there uh, and is, I guess, lucky that uh, his uh, an intended target just couldn't pull it in. As we see here on the oh, replay. Wide open. Oh, wide open. I mean, there was. As, as much as the DB was there, he was not in a position to make any sort of play on the ball. He's counting his blessings at that point, I'm telling you. So second down and 10 yards to go. Ball on the 11, so for all intents and purposes, the Buccaneers could get a first down. But realistically, it's as close to goal to go as you can get, I guess, without being inside the 10. Wetmore still back into his gun situation. And now he throws the same route inside. Great catch and touchdown. Number 87, don't have the name on the roster, but touchdown Buccaneers as they capitalize on some big plays and fortuitous penalties and jump into the lead for the first time this afternoon with 9-12 left in the second quarter. Yeah, number 21 is the DB there. I, I don't have a name on, on the roster, unfortunately, for that number as well. And he, he made a valiant effort trying to go for the ball. He saw the receiver was underneath him. He was the target. He went for the ball to try to snag it out of his hands. Uh, but there's just no way 87 uh, gripped a hold of that ball and trotted in for the six. So Stuckless gets them down to scoring zone, and then the aerial attack takes over, and it works for the Buccaneers as they capitalize on a play. Stuckless now in for the convert to push it to a 14-7 to lead. He's got a straightaway breeze from his back. Should help him. And up it is. And it is a 14-7, to 9-12 left in the first half. So that whole series really came about because of an interception. Um, turnovers are so key and in, in any game, it doesn't matter what age group you're talking about or what level of, of competition, uh, when you're turning the ball over to the other team and giving them a, a clean shot at, at uh, going ahead or, or getting a possession for score, uh, it's hard to come back from that. And other than the first drive, first offensive drive of the Mustangs, it's kind of slowed down a bit on their offensive side of the ball. Last couple of possessions, as you mentioned, turnovers is a big part of that. Yeah, a couple of miscues here and there. But, I, you know, I, I did see some good stuff in that opening drive. I think they've got the capability of, of shaking their head a little bit and saying, okay, let's, let's get ourselves going here. I, I tend to think that uh, the Buccaneers, is, they're stronger on offense than they are on defense, so they're quite happy to just churn it out and take five minutes off the clock and, and come away with uh, seven points. So Stuckless with the kickoff, three receivers back. It's a punch drive. Over to the number 21 of the Mustangs. He gets it on about his own 10-yard line. Now getting, trying to get to the protection on the return. Looks like he'll get out to about the 27, 28-yard line to be first and 10 Mustangs. So we're going to have to see what the Mustangs are able to do here. I mean, the best thing that we can hope for, they, they don't need a quick score, right? They want a nice, long, grinding score. They want to take four or five minutes off that clock. 
They want at least three or four first downs here. They want to run and pass a little bit. And that allows the defense to rest. It allows them to exert a little bit of dominance and allows them to take control of the of the clock back from the Buccaneers, who really have been in, in game control mode here for the last, well, this entire quarter. So first and 10 for the Mustangs. Ball on the 28-yard line. Again, they've got the four offensive linemen set. Pistol, comfort right to the air, throws a little hook inside. This time making the catch is number 87, Chris Brown. The very same play they did earlier, but that it was a, a, an interception on, come right back to it again. Good coaching strategy, get confidence back in the quarterback and receiver. Well, and, and Chris Brown actually has been their, their go-to guy so far this season. He's scored more touchdowns than everybody else on the team combined. Uh, he's been uh, uh, quite a force to be reckoned with. As a matter of fact, I think he had three touchdowns in one game and three in another game. So first and 10. Looking at the Mustangs, this time they run a quick toss to Aubrey Ellis to the outside edge. Runs into all kinds of problems there, but basically bumped down by defense number 91 of the Buccaneers. It'll be almost a no gain, second and long. It was almost like watching a pinball game there because it looked like he was gonna be able to cut back inside and bang, hit 91 and he switched straight to the ground. I don't think 91 even had his hands out, but uh, he certainly stopped him in his tracks. So no gain on the play or a loss of about a half a yard, I'd say. So second end long for the Mustangs. Looking to put a little bit of an offensive drive together here. Ellis again with the ball. Working to the outside, not getting much block and turns upfield. You get positive yards out of it. Get about a six yard, five yard gain. It'll be third down and about five to go. That whole defensive stand was started by the nose guard. He pushed back the center for Moncton about four yards, caused uh, Aubrey to, to get his feet caught up actually before he even got a, any sort of speed going. And then he couldn't find a hole after that. So that was an initial surge from the defensive line for, uh, uh, for the Buccaneers that really kept that from being any worse. Long time centerman Corey Lorette for the Mustangs, one of the team leaders. Big enthusiast of football in the community, coaches at Moncton High School as well. Comfort goes to the air, goes incomplete. Pass intended, number 23, Troy Hicks. Looks like we've got another pass interference here, perhaps. The back umpire threw that flag immediately when the ball was, uh, just as the ball hit the turf. Uh, so I think that we'll be talking to the uh, Mustangs uh, coaches, or uh, captains, I should say, and we'll see that going up 15 yards. And the referee in the backfield is longtime official, Andy Atkins, who's been a big supporter of uh, tackle football here in the Moncton area. A long time referee, uh, he's coached at the, uh, a ref I should say, at the CIS level as well. And when you see Andy in the uh, defensive backfield, you know you're gonna get a quality job done by someone who's seen just about everything. Absolutely. I've got a lot of respect for Andy. I've got respect for all the referees, don't get me wrong, but Andy's one of those guys that I've, I've seen on the field for over 25 years. And, and he's, he's always got a smile and, and he's always quick to, to congratulate people on, on good things. Uh, and he, he calls a fair game, absolutely. So it is a first down based on a penalty. Not exactly sure where the ball is gonna be spotted. So it is first down, 50 yard line uh, for the Mustangs. It m probably, I haven't seen Co uh, Pickerel Head referee uh, Bill Pickerel with a call, but I think it must be some type of interference. Yeah, it was it was pass interference, but uh, I believe they put it at the spot of the foul because that's what would have achieved the first down yardage. So motion by the Mustangs. Ellis on a quick toss to the outside, in trouble in the backyard. Now he's all by himself, but he does have room if he get away. All kinds of bodies coming, still on his feet, and basically out of ten players on defense, Aubrey was trying to handle seven of them all by himself and got nowhere. <laughs> and Dan Comfort. The starting quarterback tried to level a defensive lineman. And I'm pretty sure that his offensive coordinator didn't see that because you'd be calling a timeout and sitting your quarterback down for about 30 seconds and saying, don't you ever put yourself in that position ever again. We see it right there in the replay. There's tried no to, upside. There is no <laughs> upside. What are you gonna do, gain us two yards? Second down, 17 yards to go for the Mustangs as they have a little bit of a problem getting their ground game in line. Comfort in a pistol situation, goes back to a drop, looking to throw the ball, kicks it out to Mo Russell, and uh, he has a late hit, absolutely a late hit. Uh, the ball was on the ground, uh, there, was, there was no threat of a play, 
and the Buccaneers took an opportunity for a late hit, so we're going to see that come back. Well, I believe it's actually going to be on Steve Fox. Is it really? Yeah. <laughs> what the did I miss then? The receiver. Okay. Oh, it is. <laughs> I'm s everybody at home, I am wrong. I apologize. <laughs> so a late hit on Moncton for no reason whatsoever. Um, it's it's just as bad. It doesn't matter which team uh, in, uh, incurred it. It's, it's a high-level game, it really is. There's a lot of emotion being played out there. Uh, these guys play it because they're serious about the sport. Uh, but there are times where you have to say to yourself, all right. I'm well, I think the overall theme for the league is we all go to work on Monday. Absolutely. So, you know, you got to play within the, the rules and regulations so, you know, it doesn't turn into a situation where people are getting unnecessarily hurt. Yeah. It is objectionable conduct, unnecessary roughness against number 88, Steve Fox. And... To coach uh, head coach Terrace's uh, benefit, he took Steve off the field. Yeah, absolutely. And that's one thing that uh, Coach Terrace is uh, is he's absolutely adamant about is that there has to be respect for the game at, uh, in every respect whatsoever. Uh, and that's that's something he's tried to inject into his players this year, taking over as head coach. So a long way to go for the Mustangs. They're originally on uh, Buccaneers 50. Now they're back up to their own 37-yard line. They're running the ball with Roussel coming right at them on his feet. He's going to gain a couple of yards, be fourth down and about 30. That was not the series that Moncton needed at this point. Uh, we're looking at 5.30 on the clock. Uh, they, they really had an opportunity to get something going here. A couple of miscues, uh, that, that late penalty that pushed them way back to make it now fourth and forever. Um, it's that is certainly not what Moncton wanted out of it. And I think we're going to see Halifax jump on this, and I think they're going to try to chew out three or four of these minutes uh, and p possibly come back with, uh, with another score. And more so at this level, this league, this is such a huge game of momentum. And, uh, you know, you really, if you have the opportunity to get it, you want to hold on to it and run with it as long as you possibly can. Because if you don't have it, it makes for a long afternoon. It's exhausting. Comfort with the kick right down the middle. Fielded right, at, right out of the air, number 82. And he comes back into traffic, and that's as far as he'll get as the ball will get to the 47-yard line. It'll be first and 10 Buccaneers. Anytime you can punt and gain 20 to 30 yards out of the, the return and the cover, that's a good punt. It really is. So I mean, good for Dan Comfort. He was kicking into the wind. Uh, he got it up high enough to allow his, uh, his cover guys to get downfield, and they covered him up pretty quick. So it'll be first and 10. Five minutes here left in the quarter. 5-0-1 actually. 14-7 for the Buccaneers. Ball is spotted on their own 48-yard line. Or sorry, yeah, 48-yard line. First and 10. And I dare say the field is perfectly set for the I'll throw it, you go catch it <laughs> play. We've, <s> we've seen <laughs> it twice now. <laughs> no, it's, I think that uh, the Buccaneers have realized that their receivers are just uh, – it looks like they just have that extra one or two steps on the, the defensive backfield for, uh, for Moncton. And I think they're taking advantage of that at now. So Wetmore still under center, quarterbacking the Buccaneers here this afternoon. Yeah, we're going to, oh, roll out. He was touched. And Wetmore rumbles for about uh, four yards, five yards. Should be a second down and about five to go. Joe Rickard made a nice uh, tackle there, went down low and made sure that he brought him down. Alan Wetmore, is, he's a big boy to, to try to bring down. And Joel did the right thing by going low and tying up the foot. See, one of those ones that you, you wouldn't want uh, Wetmore to turn into you. <laughs> no, no. Because uh, he's got the capability of uh, getting those extra few yards at your expense. He does. So second down, five yards to go. Ball spotted at the 54-yard line of the Buccaneers. 3.48 here left in the second quarter. Peter Como, Jeff Reith, Vince Williams bringing you action here on Rogers TV. There's Stuckless again with a carry. Close to the first down. Depends where his knee went, what the spot's going to be. No, it looks like he's got it by at least a yard here. So that'll be first down as the Buccaneers cross into the Mustangs part of the field. To a little, see a little bit of chatter from the wide receiver number 81 for the Buccaneers talking to the head linesman here, asking him to keep an eye on the defensive play uh, where the hands are coming up and maybe interfering with his route. We'll, we'll see if that uh, creates any 
concept in the head referee or the head linesman's mind to maybe come up with a flag. We'll see what happens here as the play progresses. First and ten, Buccaneers, and it was almost this exact spot. Well, probably up another ten yards for the the heave hole touchdown ball that uh, saw earlier. He does go back, throws it right over the middle, wide open receiver, and room to move. He does get another first down. It'd be inside. Mustangs 30-yard line to about the 27-yard line. First and 10 Buccaneers with a flag on the play. And normally that would be holding against the offensive line. That play happened so quick. Yeah, you see uh, you see, B big number. I'm not even sure what his number is. The big, the big lineman there for the Buccaneers raising his hands going, come on, come on, what was that all about? Uh, and I know they just saw the, the replay, but I didn't see it in time. I'm sorry, I don't know if we saw the holding penalty when it was called or not. The interesting thing about the passing game that uh, the Buccaneers have going right now is it really is timing. Um, and it, it really does play like these guys do a lot of backyard uh, uh, football. Because all Wetmore is doing is he's taking the snap and he's immediately throwing to a spot on the field. He's not trying to lead, read, or, or see. He is just, he's throwing where he knows the ball's got to be. And uh, it's working for them because that was a nice pass play again that comes back because of an unfortunate hold penalty on part of the uh, Buccaneers. So it was first down, 10 yards back, so it's now first and 20, ball back inside Buccaneers side of the field at their own 49 yard line. Wetmore in underneath the center, stuck with again with the carry, a little bit of pressure there, and they do get him in the back, but it'll be a loss of about two yards, it'll be second down, and about 22 yards to go, and under the three minute clock now for the first half. And we see, Riv or we see Moncton really put some guys up in the box, and they were going hard at the snap. Uh, they uh, they had the heat going at that point, and it, it worked out for them. We see that on the replay. They had at least four or five guys into the backfield at the snap. I so think that's what we're going to have to see from Moncton at this point. They're going to have to play a little more aggressive on the defense. They're going to have to force uh, the Buccaneers' uh, offensive side to, to react a little quicker and try to interfere a little bit with, uh, with what Wetmore thinks that he can accomplish while he's under center. So that'll put a uh, passing situation for the Buccaneers offense. Wetmore goes into a shotgun. He uh, has just a one slot back, or two slot back, so it is a uh, balanced formation. Straight drop back, puts the ball in the air right over the middle. Catch and tackle by Stevie Cormier of the Mustangs. So it'll be about a five or six yard catch. It'll be third down and still over 15 yards to go. We're in the 140. Four left here in the half. Ruby was still playing his own defense as we see there, and Stevie was just sitting at the top of his box. He knew exactly what he had to do when he was walk, watching for the crossing patterns. Uh, so good coverage on his part, be able to, to stop any, forth, any further uh, yak, as they say, yards after catch. And here's a situation where the Mustangs don't want to give up a big play here as we wind out the quarter. You want to try and get a stop in third and long. Buccaneers obviously trying to keep the drive alive. A little bit of pre-snap motion there. Wetmore is trying to get a slot back. Oh, bad snap. Let's see what the Mustangs can do here. They've got him under the run here. And it might have been a catch. I don't know if it skipped off the turf or not, Peter, but uh, certainly just got back to the line of scrimmage regardless. But it looks like it's an incomplete pass as there was a trap underneath, and realistically, Wetmore, with his experience, was just getting rid of the ball because he was in big trouble in his backfield and giving up another 10 yards. So yeah. it'll be fourth down. There's 108 left in the half. Uh, Buccaneers will be kicking with the wind. I think we're going to see uh, the Mustangs. They're going to be deep in their end, unless they can make something happen on the punt. That's the, that's the other aspect of 10-man football. Uh, the special team returns. Uh, there's a lot more field to run in. So sometimes you see these things break open into a touchdown. Well, if the ball gets in the wind, it's picked up just a little bit. It's going to carry a fair ways. Snaps good, kicks up, doesn't spiral, so it'll look like they're more sell back to get it for the Mustangs, but it is going to be a cop and corner kick as it goes on the 15-yard line. It'll be first and 10, Mustangs, 59 seconds left with a very long field to score. Yeah, the, the leading receiver, the, the expected leading receiver for Mustangs coming into this season was going to be in the form of Matt Rose, who played four years at Mount A and, and went to the East-West Bowl. Uh, significant CIS experience, and they were hoping that he would be one of those go-to guys. But he's not suited for today's game. So that's a big weapon not to have with a minute on the clock and looking for a lot of field to cover. So it'll be first and ten Mustangs on their own 15-yard line. 
And the other thing, too, I guess, Jeff, is you got to be leery if you're going to go for the big play. You don't want to give up a big play. So they have to be cautious with regards to turnovers, obviously. Both teams have all their timeouts as well, so you might see that if uh, Halifax can stop them here in the first down or second down, uh, you'll see the uh, timeouts coming out, too, to try to preserve some game clock. So Comfort goes right to the air, puts it right over the middle. Uh, open uh, Fox was the receiver, but it was just on the outside of his shoulder. Second and long. And it was a good 10 or 15 yards long, too. So uh, I don't know whether or not Fox was, was holding up a little bit and, and not running as, as hard as he could, but uh, that was overthrown by a good six or seven yards. Um, we'll see what, if they come back at it again. It's the nice thing about an incomplete pass. You don't lose a lot of time off the clock, and it doesn't start until the snap, so you preserve it without having to use a timeout. Second down, 10 yards to go. Ball on their own 15-yard line. Comfort in the uh, pistol formation for the quarterback. He runs Aubrey Ellis to the weak side of the field. He does have a hole. If he's and got he's off the races. And he's going to get pushed out of bounds. He will get a first down and get out to about the 37-yard line, 38-yard line. It'll be first and 10. Mustangs, 49 seconds left on the clock. Well, and the key thing there is he stepped out of bounds. Well, two key things, I guess. He got the first down, which is excellent for them. Uh, but stepping out of bounds stops the clock until the snap again. Uh, so uh, they're able to take a couple of seconds here and figure out what they want to do without it bleeding any time off the clock, which is good for, uh, for the Mustangs, of course. So first and 10 Mustangs, Vile on their own 38-yard line. Quick run there by Aubrey Ellis. First down yardage gained. Comfort now in the pistol situation, going back to the air. Looking for the receiver way over the top. Ball's up in the air, and it is batted oh. a couple times, but incomplete. Ball intended number 87, Chris Brown. Had a shot at it, just wasn't able to reel it in. Yeah, and the, the DB in that case was number 28, I believe, is who it was, uh, Sam Richard. See here on the replay. Great defensive play on his part because he was in the right spot and immediately starts playing the hands of the receiver. Because if you can start to, to bobble that and keep his hands down, there's no penalty there. Once the ball touches a hand and they're both, both making a play for the ball, there is no penalty. And good for the referee for not throwing that on there, but... Uh, uh, too bad for the Mustangs not to come up with the ball. So second and 10, 43 seconds left here in the second quarter, the first half. Buccaneers up 14 to seven. Aubrey again off tackle, same play, same hole. He's got room down the sidelines and almost the same gain and pushed out at the same time. Same place after yards gain. It'll be first and 10 Mustangs. The ball now across the center field. It'll be on the Buccaneers 51 yard line. Classic uh, clock management here, right? You go out on your first down and you're looking for that deep pattern uh, pass can hit that receiver and there's nobody behind nobody behind him uh, and he can make a run for the uh, end zone great if he doesn't come up with it it hits the ground the clock doesn't start then they come out with a real nice run play both times stepping out of bounds and stopping the clock again so we've just gotten looks like okay there's there's that first time out for the Buccaneers well it's one of those ones after those type of runs that takes an awful lot of energy out of the defense chasing a uh, fleet footed back to the sidelines gained 17 almost 20 yards on two carries moving the ball 34 yards or so uh, across the field so it is a timeout we are at 37 seconds left in the half it's 14 to 7 for the Buccaneers and the Mustangs are trying to put some points on the board here late in the first half well, they've gotten almost halfway to their goal, and they've only lost uh, 21 seconds off the clock. So it's nice to see how they're how they're working the field, and they're keeping an eye on where they're uh, out of bounds is. Uh, great, great call selection as far as I'm concerned. I mean, it's uh, it's great to see the Mustangs be able to put together a bit of a uh, playbook that way. So uh, the recap of the first half, the. Uh Buccaneers came on the field and they were basically three and out. Mustangs got the ball back and scored on their possession. And then since then, it's just been some big plays and costly penalties on the Mustang side to get two touchdowns on the board for the Buccaneers, making it 14 to seven. Yeah, and then both of those scores came in the second quarter. I mean, we went into the into the second quarter, seven nothing for the Mustangs. The Mustangs arguably were, were controlling the game at that point, uh, but the Mustangs really, uh, the uh, Buccaneers really took over that uh, first six or seven minutes of this quarter. Uh, nice to see if they can nod it up here for the half. So first and 10, Mustangs. Ball snapped, Comfort goes to the air. He puts it over the top and running down, did not track the ball. It was thrown out of bounds. Ball intended number 87, Chris Brown incomplete, second and 10. Now I wonder if they're gonna roll the dice on that same run play again. It's worked for them twice. They've got some good blocking. Um, you might you might see them try to fake it a little bit, uh, play action it into that run and, and come up with a pass again. Maybe they've set up uh, that type of play in the, the minds of the Buccaneers, but we'll have to wait and see what happens here. 
But again, so good clock management. Second and 10, Mustangs, 32 seconds left here. Second quarter, first half. Comfort, pistol situation. Aubrey Ellis, the tailback behind him. They're going right back to the air. Throws the ball over the top now. Number nine, Leslie Green. Oh, and that's going to be a pass interference against the offense. Uh, he ended up pushing against the defender to get some uh, get some separation there and turn to make the make a play on the ball and it just dropped to the ground. So not only do they not get the reception, but now there's a penalty against them as well and they're gonna be pushed back. You don't often see offensive pass interference, but here you see right there, he pushes for the se separation and uh, ended up trying to come back to make the play on the ball. So that'll be a costly penalty against the Mustangs. It only costs about four seconds on the clock. However, it uh, puts more real estate between them and the scoring zone. 28 seconds left, 14-7, Buccaneers. Peter Como, Jeff Reith, Vince Williams, as well as the rest of the Rogers crew here at Woody Hayes Memorial Field on a warm Saturday afternoon. That last intended receiver, number nine, Leslie Green. He uh, he studies at Holland College on the island, but he, ha he, he, he hails from another island, Nassau, Bahamas. So I'm not sure how much football is played in the Bahamas, uh, but it looks like he's picking it up quite well here. So it'll be second and 25 yards for your Mustangs. Buccaneers kind of in a protect the back door. That is the fake play. Oh, great fake by Comfort. He should just take off. And he is. He was pointing downfield, but nobody was. Oh, look at the hold back there. I don't know. If, yeah, there's the flag, unfortunately. Now they're going to get the first down potentially. Another flag out of bounds. There's a hit out of bounds. Uh, so that'll be interesting. So the hold was right close to the first down marker because remember we had 20 game. yards to go. 25. Uh, 25 yards to go. So where that flag actually is, oh yeah, here we see on the replay, everybody's falling. We can see the hold down here, which is really unfortunate. He had his arms right around him. Do we see it on the screen? No, we don't see it, unfortunately. Well, you see, should see the rough call out of bounds as Comfort stepped out of bounds, got cranked. Yeah, right there, number 27. Yeah, there's no need that for that. That had to be one of the cleanest open field quarterback boots <laughs> I've ever seen in the history of the game. There was no one on the other side of the Trojan logo at center field that had a white shirt on. Nobody. He had to come all the way from the backside and, and make the out of bounds uh, tackle. Which uh, actually speaks to the, stra uh, the strength of Aubrey Ellis's playing off tackle to the right yep. because the whole defense flowed hard right. Comfort kept him. When he turned the corner, he probably couldn't believe where did everybody go. Yeah, absolutely. And he was even he even sold it just a little bit further by pointing downfield as if he was looking for a receiver, and then he tucked it away and he took off. So it is holding against the Mustangs. Mustang, and then unnecessary roughness. So it should be a net five up from the holding point. If I know my yeah. rule book, and that's that's what they've done. Yeah. So now there's 16 seconds left in the half. The ball is on the Buccaneers' 33-yard line. First and 10 Mustangs with timeouts. That's so right. They still have both timeouts. Should be manage the clock as well as their timeouts. They should have a shot at the end zone. Comfort drops back, puts it over the top, and I think there was a miscue by the receivers. Yeah. Because uh, Green hooked up. And the slot back, in this case, number 23, Troy Hicks, Tory Hicks, which might have looked like a corner, never got there. So it is now second and 10, ball on the 33-yard uh, line, 12 seconds remaining in the half. So we saw them uh, set up that, uh, that quarterback keep by doing the run twice to the right side. Uh, we'll have to wait and see if they try that. I mean, we've only got 12 seconds at this point. You're pretty much... You're pretty much taking three shots to the end zone, I think, at this point. So Comfort drops back, puts the ball in the air on a rope to Fox. It goes incomplete, again, off the mark. It was off his back shoulder. Tough way for Steve Fox to make that catch. Yeah, I think that Comfort is, uh, he's got some good mechanics and he's, and he's seeing his receivers, but I, I think that maybe what we're seeing is they're just, they don't have enough practice under the belt at this point. I, th I think that the receivers are going to points in the field where Comfort's expecting a slightly different end point, uh, and that just takes time. So now we are third and 10, seven seconds left. So with a timeout, you would assume there's gonna be a chance for two plays. Yeah, it'll depend on how quickly this play comes to an end, if it's a completed pass and how quickly it gets to the ground. 
So here we go for the Mustangs. Comfort runs a wide out screen and he runs in the traffic and that's number 87, Chris Brown. He does get positive yards. I don't think enough for the first down, but regardless, there's one second left on the clock. So we'll see one shot at the end zone and that is really gonna end this. Unless of course there's a defensive uh, uh, penalty of some description, then we may have one more play after that. So I think it is a timeout for the Mustangs. So the stage is set, one play to the end zone. They're down 14 to seven. Ball is, it looks like about the 26 yard line. So it's a, a pass that can get into the end zone. They are throwing against the wind, but uh, I think Comfort's arm will get into the end zone. Yeah, the, the key is gonna be is, is to try to get two or three guys in there, get in behind uh, the, the must, uh, the, uh, they're going for a field goal. They're going for a field goal. Yeah, Stevie Cormier has brought the tee out and marked it down. So the last play of the half will be a field goal Interesting. against the win for the Mustangs. Uh, he'll be kicking it from the 33-yard line. Uh, I would think that's normally within his range, although the wind is going to make it just a little more trickier for him. That's, that's a healthy attempt. I don't care what level you're at. Ball is up. And it is just short, and now it's a matter of covering the routine, the return. And uh, that is the end of the half. It is a 14 to seven. The Buccaneers out of Nova Scotia against the Munch, Munch and Mustangs. We'll take a break and be back with your halftime and second half action. Welcome back to Woody Hayes Field. You're watching Maritime Football League action. The, the Nova Scotia Buccaneers leading at the halftime, 14 to seven, and I'm joined by player coach from the Buccaneers, Alan Wetmore. Alan, the team got off to a very slow start defensively. <laughs> very slow. Very slow. And, and the offensively. <laughs> the Mustangs were able to move the ball relatively easy in that first series and scoring on a quarterback plunge. What yeah. type of adjustments defensively do you have to make? Well, yeah, I think we just needed to wake up, you know. I think, you know, road trips in this league are tough, you know. You work all morning, you get in the car, and you, and you drive up, and, and uh, you know, probably half these guys were out last night, so probably, you know, it's just a slow start, and, you know, I think we got to figure it out. That's a nice play by them. I think uh, we ran the same play, and it was wide open, so, you know, that's a hard play to cover, and we just got to get better at making sure that our guys do the job that they're supposed to do. And you talked a little bit about those adjustments in that second half. Offensively, you guys stepped it up. You are able to get a long strike, a 45-yard strike to your uh, your best receiver, Hoyt, in that yeah. uh, in that series. What what did you find offensively worked? Well, I, I have a lot of faith in our receivers. I have a lot of faith in, in all four of our receivers. I think they're, all, they're a great squad. I think the, the four of them together are... A great combination. I think we, you know, I think we have a bit of an advantage there, or at least we have an ability to compete at that area. Uh, they're pretty stout on the run. They got some big boys in there doing a great job on the run. So uh, you know, we got to throw the ball around a little bit, and the receivers got to make plays, and, and certainly they have. And you talk about those adjustments, and you know, you got the second half here, two quarters to make those adjustments and continue the offensive uh, strike, and as well as defensively, you did a pretty good job in that second quarter. What would be the final message going into the third and the fourth? Well, I think there was three penalties that really hurt us in that, in, in that half and really broke some momentum uh, that we had. So I think we got to up our discipline level, make sure that we don't get those penalties and keep doing what we're doing, and, uh, and it'll turn out the way it's supposed to turn out. Thanks for this, Coach. Good luck in the All second All right, half. thanks. See you later. Stay with us. You are watching Maritime Football League action. The Nova Scotia Buccaneers leading 14 to 7. You're watching it on Rogers TV. Welcome back to Woody Hayes Field. The Mustangs trailing 14 to seven to the Nova Scotia Buccaneers. I'm joined now by the head coach of the Mustangs, Jason Terrace. Jason, tough half, second, second quarter in particularly for your team. You came out with some quick strikes in the first quarter. You're able to jump all over the, the box, but uh, they made some adjustments defensively. What did you like out of your team in the first uh, two quarters? Uh, well, 
the team did a at the start of the game. And, uh, we're guys, uh, they're, they're doing a good job, but around other things kind of went sideways. The, the veterans on the team are doing a good job at rallying the younger guys, and I think we're going to refocus and go better in the second half. And you talked a little bit about that focus of your young guys and your veterans. You have 19 returning players that have a lot of a lot of uh, vet veteran type savvy. They're coming from CIS programs, the AFL program in uh, the Maritimes. Talk about the camaraderie between your veterans and your young players. Oh, we got some awesome guys. Uh, some guys that come back with Steve Cormier that's uh, with the team for over 10 years and. Um, some other guys like Dom Comtois, good leaders on the field, and uh, we do have a good mix of young high school kids coming up, learning from these guys. Uh, they're not just learning football skills, they're learning people skills too, and uh, they're going to be incredible football players in the future because of that. Now, with the adjustments here in the second half, Halifax seemed to be, excuse me, Nova Scotia seemed to be moving the ball quite well in that second quarter. They were able to get down, up and down the field with some quick, pretty quick strikes, long strikes to the receivers. What type of adjustments do you have to make? Uh, we made some mistakes in the first half, uh, some fundamental mistakes, some fundamental football mistakes. Uh, we're just going to uh, continue playing our game, uh, go back to basics, go back to fundamentals. We're good, great fundamental football players, so um, we're going to keep doing what works and, and change what doesn't. Thanks for this, Coach. Good luck in the second half. Thanks a lot. Head coach Jason Terrace, the Mustangs trailing at the half. 14-7 to the Nova Scotia Buccaneers. You're watching Maritime Football League action here on Rogers TV. And welcome back to second uh, half action. Just started with the kickoff. Buccaneers kicked off to the Mustangs. It's 14 to seven for the Buccaneers. Mustangs with possession in the in the second half, and they will uh, field the ball on their own 36-yard line. So we'll have to see what happens uh, in the second half to see what uh, Mustangs do for adjustments. Uh, I know that uh, during the half uh, halftime interviews, there, uh, Coach Terrace indicated there were a couple of miscues that they're hoping to uh, uh, eliminate in the second half and see what happens here. Well, senior football, who can make the best adjustments at halftime? That's going to be the key. And that's got to be one of the challenges for uh, Coach Wetmore. He's on the field with his offense. It's hard for him to figure out where he has to make his adjustments, to be honest. So uh, second down. That's Roussel with the carry. Big yards gain. He ripped off about 20, still on his feet, running down the field. He gets about a 25-yard gain. First and 10 Mustangs. Good start to the opening of the second half. Yeah, you like to see that explosive start like that. It really sets the stage, hopefully, for what will be a drive down to get that score and nod it up. 14-14 uh, is, is certainly what the, the plan of the attack is at this point. But that was a great little run by Mo Roussel. So, across this field, it's first and 10 Mustangs on the Buccaneers' 49-yard line. Dan Comfort quarterbacking the Mustangs. Right now, Mo Roussel in the backfield, replacing Aubrey Ellis, who had a really strong first half. Roussel again with the carry. Pretty much the same uh, way, keeping his feet moving, and it looks like he's got another first down, if not really close, to be second and short, Mustangs. Yeah, an, an interesting uh, tidbit here, too. Mo Roussel is another one of the uh, player coaches. Uh, he's the uh, strength and conditioning coach for the Mustangs. Uh, so although he may not be involved in the uh, play calling and trying to do any adjustments on the field, he is a coach and a player. So second down and less than a yard for the Mustangs. So two opening drives where they put the they put the ball in the hands of the offensive line, push the wall, control the line of scrimmage. Playing with that four uh, four man offensive line helps to do that. First down run number 33. That's Robbie Chevery. Good opening drive by the Mustangs here. Just getting underway. 13 minutes left in the third quarter. 14 to seven for the Buccaneers. Well, that, the old adage in, in uh, coaching football, if it's working, why change it, right? So we've just seen three really good runs uh, with good field, uh, eating, eating up good field. Uh, we'll see if they stay with it. So Dan Comfort, quarterback, pistol situation. Goes to the air for the first time, puts it up to Steve Fox. Fox gains a positive yards, a nice little quick hitter for the offense. He was trying to fight back upfield, but uh, the defenders really closed on him hard and uh, kept it to what, a six yard gain, seven yard gain? six yard, it'll be second down, four yards to go. Ball on the 26 yard line. 
Good opening drive by the Mustangs as they try to reestablish the ground game. Comfort with a nice quick hit throw. Still in pistol situation. Goes back to Roussel. Roussel follows Chevry through the hole. Still on his feet, pushing his way forward. Looks like he could have got a first down. We'll have to wait and see what the referees, where the referees spot. Yeah, and, and like you said, he follows Chevrolet right through that hole. It's nice to see that uh, tandem running. Both have handled the ball, uh, but both have blocked as well for each other. And uh, that's such a key, uh, a key part of the running game is if you can get those blocks, especially within the first three or four yards, uh, then the ball carrier can really open it up and get those extra yards for you. So first and 10. Now the Mustangs. Comfort back, looks like it's a screen play. Roussel with the catch and room to run. Great open field tackle there by the Buccaneers. I think it was number 33, and that would be John Perrot. John Perrot, I guess. Uh, Well-designed play. Only got a few yards out of it, though. That's the thing with the, with the screen. Here we see on the replay, uh, he had to go up hard to get the ball, so that takes away some of the, uh, some of the momentum that he could have had chugging up field. Uh, but uh, still, positive yards, a completed pass. Uh, and now the defense has to be uh, be aware of that in the playbook as well. So second down and about six yards to go for the Mustangs. They run toss. Now Aubrey Ellis through the hole, spin, gets positive yards, close to a first down. We'll have to wait and see where the spot is. Looked like that was 36 on the tackle coming from the backside linebacker spot. Uh, yeah, Donovan Blue is, and we see here on the replay, he's got some initial good blocks upfield but it's that pursuit from the backside that uh, ended up uh, ending that play. So third down and four yards to go as the Mustangs try to keep this opening drive to the third quarter alive. Comfort in a pistol situation. Fake to Aubrey, there it is that, there's a throw to the short receiver oh. and he misses it. Now it's a roughing the passer against number 21. Uh, we don't, yeah, it's uh, Mitch Keys roughing the passer after the throw, so turning a fourth down situation into a first down situation and for the Mustangs, the drive stays alive. Here we see on the replay, the ball is well away, and uh, the defender, there was no reason for him to come in like that. It's not like he came in blind or wasn't aware where the ball was. The ball went right past his field of vision. See, again, it's those, those, those sorts of play that, there's really no place for that in football. And, and I know you and, and any other coach that I've ever worked with, uh, you just don't stand for that sort of stuff. There's no need for it. Well, I mean, in that situation, in most cases, it's a selfish move by the player. Uh, in that situation, it would have been a fourth down and fairly long yards for the for the Mustangs. Now it's first and 10, and it looks like it's first and goal to go as the ball looks like it's spotted on the one-yard line. It would have been about a 15-yard penalty. So it goes from a potential turnover to a potential touchdown and a tie-up for the, for the uh, Mustangs here with the ball in threatening position. Comfort still stays in pistol. Aubrey Ellis back in a tailback for the Mustangs. And he does get the ball running straight at them, finding his way up the field and scores a touchdown, only had a yard to go. That's right, I mean, it's, if, if all you've got is a yard, if you don't come away with a score on that, then uh, shame on you. But the reality is the, there's no way that the Buccaneers should have been in that position because they should not have uh, drawn that flag in, in that situation. So there's 10.07 left in the third quarter. That was the opening drive of the quarter. Five minutes on the off the clock and a touchdown for the Mustangs, and that's the way you want to open up your second half. Absolutely. And now you get the defense, you get a little bit of momentum behind you, so maybe the defense can step in there and play a little bit, uh, put perhaps uh, pin their ears back and, and go and pressure Wetmore in the pocket, force him to uh, to make quicker decisions, and, and maybe they can get a three and out. Adam Shea now. in on the convert, Steve Cormier, number 15, pinning the ball, ball is down, kick is up. And good, point is good. We got a tie game with 10.07 here in the third quarter. Well, shaping up to be a nice game as far as uh, a back and forth. Uh, so we can only expect that the rest of the game will, will be as entertaining as uh, what we've seen so far. Well, I think uh, setting the stage for your opening half, the Mustangs did what they wanted to do, took the ball, drove the field. A fortuitous penalty kept the drive alive, otherwise they might have had to settle for a field goal, but it does tie the game up. Now it'll be interesting to see how the Buccaneers offense answers with their first possession here in the second half. Yeah, the Buccaneers don't have as deep a bench as what uh, the Mustangs have, so I think you've got a couple of guys playing both ways. Uh, we'll see how that impacts things as we go along, because it's, it's, uh, it's, a, tough, it's a tough day to play in, because it's, it's hot, uh, there's, there's a nice breeze keeping it cool, 
Um, but the fact of the matter is, if you're playing both ways or you're playing more in the field than, than what is uh, optimal, you're going to start to feel it right around now. And the other thing, too, is this is like the first extraordinarily warm day we've had. I think we had one day a couple of Tuesdays ago. Otherwise, you've been practicing in, in cooler, wet weather. Just a short kickoff, fielded by number 84, tackled on the play by Mo Roussel, as well as René Thibault. So it'll be first and 10 Buccaneers, ball on their own 49-yard uh, line, or 44-yard line. So that was good coverage on that, actually. It was a short kick, but uh, they only gave up about four yards in the run back, four or five yards. So it's uh, nice that they're able to swallow that up as quickly as they were. And actually, it could have been a coach's decision that with the respect to the ability or the talent of the deep returners to keep it out of out of their hands. With 10-man football, if you've got some speed, there's an awful lot of green you can cover in a very short while. Absolutely. And those guys in the second row, they're not necessarily there because they can catch a ball. They're typically there because they, they can do some over-the-field blocking. Uh, but, you know, handle it well, and uh, let's see what the Buccaneers can do here. So first and 10, Buccaneers ball on their own 44-yard line. Al uh, Wetmore gone the distance at quarterback, also the head coach, as I think he's waiting for his starting quarterback, who I believe is injured. He's up under center. They've gone with three receivers, ace back and H back, and they go a counter play. Luckless with the ball. He gets caught fairly early, but a one-yard gain. will be second and about nine for the Buccaneers. Yeah, play like that, if it's going to work, it works for a huge amount of yards because you've got a defense that has to now shift over, cover off those three receivers. You can't afford to, to ignore them. Uh, and initial steps were in one direction. They cut hard back against that flow. So good job on the part of the Mustangs to be able to stay at home and, and sniff that out and stop it. Um, but, you know, it, it could have been much bigger than, than what it turned out to be. I'm going to Vegas, and I'm rolling the dice, and I'm saying it's over the top. You think it's going to be a bomb, do you? It was a touchdown play, <laughs> a great pass, catch, run play. Wetmore up under center. I think he started the gun last time, but we'll see how it goes. He goes back, runs the ball to Luckless. Luckless has room on the outside. As you said, the receivers to the outside give him room, and he is just eating up the territory, running down the field, gets pushed out of bounds by Joel Rickard, but not before. He gets about 50 yards, 60 yards on the game. He first and 10, and the ball is now on the Mustangs' 15-yard line. That was a huge run, and he had all kinds of greenery. Had those receivers, the receivers for the Buccaneers are doing an amazing job of blocking downfield. And, and that's what opens those sorts of things up. Is, is here we see on the replay, and there's nobody, there's not a Mustang anywhere that has an honest play at him. And you see receivers 20 yards down the field making blocks. Uh, you know, that was a great play. Really put together well. Set up with the counter. They had the exact same formation, but they set it up with the counter prior to that. Uh, so Mustangs have to regroup here. they got to stand tough. And uh, Derek Cormier, who's had a great afternoon at the linebacker spot, got banged up a little bit on that play, and he uh, steps out. Onto the field comes uh, number 68, Nick Gotro, at the linebacker spot. So it's first, 10 yards to go, ball on the 16-yard line. Buccaneers threatening again to score and answer the Mustangs' opening scoring drive with a score of their own. And we got trips out here to the left this time. Uh, be interested to see if, uh, if they're going to try to run against it. And see, the Mustangs only have four guys to cover off four potential receivers, and it opens up the space. Wow! Stevie Cormier in quick, making the tackle in the background for a, almost a no gain. It'll be second down and long as Stevie Cormier flexes his muscles, beats the block, and gets to the back and makes a tackle. Yeah, so we see here in the replay, and that this he came in a little tight. Uh, but Stevie Cormier was in there. He was uh, obviously going at snap, and uh, he, he had a spot in the field he was going to, and it was exactly the right spot. And actually, if you look at that replay, too, if that back could have just stepped out, he would have been on the outside edge and probably still running now. Yeah, he'd be gone. But it is third down, still 10 yards, no gain on that play. Look, Wetmore took a look, and they went, uh, when the offense went trips to the field, it left one-on-one -on -one coverage on the back side. Yeah. So it looks like you might see a little of uh, if he goes over the top. There's the throw, slant in, wow. catch, still working his way, trying to get in the end zone. Doesn't look like he's going to get there, but he should have a first down. It'll be first and goal to go, Buccaneers. Seven 
15 here in the third quarter remaining. Score all tied up 14-14. That was a great play on the part of the receiver because he goes from the outside and he comes back across the field and finds that open spot in front of the defenders, uh, behind the linebackers. I mean, there, it, was, it was a great pass, uh, gr great pass play on his part. Good swarming defense, keep him out of the end zone, uh, but the damage was done. So it is first and goal to go ball on the one yard line of the Mustangs defense setting up right on the goal line. Wetmore under center. Away from the trips now. Wetmore Bye. decides to throw the ball and it is a pass and catch to an open receiver in the end zone and the Buccaneers are up on top. I don't have a number for 82 unfortunately but uh, uh, secured the ball and, and fell to the ground, made sure that uh, he had possession of the ball and in the end zone. So uh, good good series of plays by the Buccaneers. So they answered. Uh, you know, we, we asked the question as they were taking the field how they would answer that quick drive uh, by the Mustangs, uh, and they had their own quick drive back. Well, Joe Stuckless ripped off about 60 yards on one play, and that really put a whole different look on the field as they were well inside uh, the Mustangs' uh, scoring zone. And uh, Luckless is out to kick the converse for a converted touchdown lead. It is not through, incomplete. Hit the, it was blocked and hit the upright. So, so converse no good, it's 20 to 14. Interesting, how many games have you seen come down to a converse? I've seen more than I'd like to. Uh, and, I, and normally when you say it that way, you've been on the wrong end of uh, the converse, that was myth. Yeah. So it's 20 to 14, 634 left in the third quarter, Buccaneers ahead. 20 to 14. Mustangs came out with a strong drive and scored. Buc Buccaneers come back out and they score. Mustangs have to answer again. They absolutely have to um, because uh, we talk about momentum shift and obviously we didn't see a momentum shift. Uh, Buc Buccaneers came out and did what they had to do. Um, the offenses seem to be carrying the game uh, more so than the defenses in this case. The defenses have got some uh, holes in them. Uh, both offenses are starting to figure out where those spots are. Uh, but like we said all along, a 10-man ball, sometimes those holes are just naturally there because of the lack of personnel. So Luckless uh, doing the kicking work for the Buccaneers as well, kicks it off, line drive, right to the receiver, number 21, don't have his name. He's going to the left, now cutting upside, has a little bit of room. If he gets a block to the outside, and he's still working down the field. It's a good return and get out to about the 44 yard line. It'll be first and 10, the Mustang 624 on the clock. Buccaneers up 20 to 14. Anytime you've got a kickoff and you're further than the 25, that's a success. In this case here, we're up to the 45. So a uh, fantastic run back, really put the offense in a position to capitalize on that because you've got your whole playbook ahead of you at this point. Uh, and you know, you, you can play with a little bit of uh, relaxed uh, methods here. So we'll, we'll see what the Mustangs come out. They had some real good success with the, with the run game. Uh, we'll see if they continue with that. Comfort going the distance so far at quarterback, Aubrey Ellis back in a tailback. Mustangs exercising a four offensive lineman set. Comfort in a pistol. There's Aubrey Ellis running right at the defense. He gets about four or five yards before tackled by three or four of the Buccaneers defense will be second down and about five yards to go. Ball will be spotted at about the 47-48 uh, yard line. Yeah, that's that's not a bad spot to be with a run. I mean, anytime you can get two to three yards, that you've really you've really done what the run was designed to do. Uh, runs aren't typically designed to go 60 yards. When they do, that's awesome. They look great, but that's not what they're designed to do. They're designed to push back the defense. They're designed to bring them in a little bit to respect the run and get those two or three yards to put them in a better position. So it's about a three-yard gain. It's be second and seven. Now they run inside, counter with the fullback. He's still on his feet, muscles his way. It's about a yard short, but it will be third and short for the Mustangs as they're into uh, just about midfield, the 53, 54, 52, 53 yard line. Yeah, th it's an interesting spot to be at this point because it's so close to the first down. Uh, I, I'd be shocked if it wasn't another run. So the defense will be keying on that as well. Uh, the only question at this point will be an inside run or an outside run. If they come out and pass it at this point, I, I will shake my head, I'll be honest. Uh, but we'll, we'll see what happens. Yeah, quarterback keep. Pushes forward. Good push by the offensive line. And that does get him over the first down marker as the referee looks. He did cross midfield, and that would give him a first down. So first and 10, Mustangs keep the ball and keep the drive alive. 
You, you always hate to see that, right? I mean, you've been an offensive coordinator more times than I can count, I'm sure, so I'm not sure how many times you can count it. But how often do you really want to put your quarterback in a situation like that uh, to be uh, landed on by the big boys, you're in the middle of everything, you've still got lots of game ahead of you and it's not for a score. Uh, to me, that's a gutsy call. Well, I mean, the thing is, uh, as a coordinator, when you're talking to the quarterback, is, you know, you got to pick a bit of a seam and stay low and get upfield. And normally, they'll practice it, but they won't do it in the game. They stay a bit high, and they, you know, give an opportunity for a pretty good uh, pretty good hit by the defensive line. So if the quarterback executes it the way, understand, I just need a yard. Find a little seam, stay low, push with your feet, and you should be okay. Anything outside that, you're creating a problem for yourself. And Comfort's got the experience, right? He's been at Mount A, uh, so... I guess it was a good call. It worked out for them. Second down, about seven yards to go. Ball spotted on the 53-yard line. Buccaneers, there's a quick throw and out of the reach of Steve Fox. Not really any pressure on Comfort that time. It just looked like an errant pass. He seems to be, I won't say quite happy feet, but it didn't look like he was set very well, and the ball seemed to be coming out of his hand uh, a little awkwardly. Uh, it's almost like he didn't get it se seated into his into his fingertips as, as he would like to have. So third and long now for the Mustangs. They, they cross center. We're about 3.30 left here in the third quarter. Comfort in in a pistol situation. Ball's going to the air. He's in trouble, trying to get away. And it looks like he'll go down with a sack as he didn't get any support with the blocking. And it'll be uh, fourth down and long, and the Mustangs will be punting against the wind. Yeah, he was in trouble right from the snap there. The, the offensive line got pushed back pretty hard. He had two defensive guys in on Comfort very quickly. Uh, Comfort did the only thing he could at that point. He pulled the ball back down and, and cradled it because last thing you want to do is to have a, a fumble at that point, and then it's, then it's another six points on the board. So it'll be a long way to go for the Mustangs on that fourth, so they will be punting the ball. And as we mentioned, it's a fairly brisk wind that they'll be kicking into, and that speaks to the advantage of the returners, especially with only 10 opponents on the field here as they play 10-man ball. Shanked it a little bit, came off the outside of his foot. They get out of the five yards. There's plenty of open field with one block. The flag has already gone down. Returner is getting to the edge. I think that's going to end up coming back. I think it's probably a block from behind. It's the only time you see those sorts of uh, flags. Chris Brown uh, with the push out of bounds by the Buccaneer returner. So it will be, I'm just checking with head official Bill Pickerel. As we see here on the replay, it was a bit of an odd shank. Didn't go very deep. Uh, bounced around a little bit. The returner picked it up and started to go. Uh, yeah, we ended up having what, would, what they call a crackback block in that point. Uh, so that's going to be uh, coming back to the point of the foul and back 10 yards. Well, that's as good as a good punt. Yeah, that is as good as a good punt. Especially against the wind. So it'll be a 15-yard penalty from uh, the point of the infraction. Penalties have played fairly key points in this game, actually. So you, you hate to see that as a, as a coach. You like to see your players decide their own... Uh, outcomes, but these uh, these penalties have all proven to be costly at the wrong times. So it is uh, first and ten Buccaneers ball now on their own 40-yard line, and it's uh, 2:45 remaining here in the third quarter. So they found some good success with passing the ball. They had the nice big run, uh, but here they are in trips again. So let's let's see if they're going to try that counter again or if they're going to try to go to the air. Well, I think. Uh, I think uh, Wetmore likes when he goes to a trips formation that it brings a whole lot of defense rotate over to protect against the pass, which gives them better opportunity, he thinks, on runs. No gain on that one. Yeah, they were swallowed up pretty much immediately at the line of scrimmage. Uh, and that speaks well to the front three or four of the, of the Mustangs. Uh, they're not paying any attention to the pass. They don't care if it's trips or not. The last time I've, I've seen a nose guard or a tight end or a defensive end have to cover a receiver, it, was, uh, it wasn't pretty. So <laughs> they stay in the box and they do what they're supposed to do. So second and 10 now for the Buccaneers ball on their own 40 yard line. Again, the Buccaneers open with a trips to the left, ace in the backfield. They also have an H back, Wetmore in underneath the center. Looks like he'll be passing as they empty the backfield. 
and the ball is going to be in the air. It's thrown and uh, almost oh. caught, and we're going to get a flag there against DJ Carmichael as it looked like he was doing a little bit of head hunting. Yeah. And I don't think DJ knows he has a penalty against him, and now he knows. Now he knows. And, yeah, here we see on the replay. And, again, like we've said before, there was no need for this hit at all. The receiver's down, uh, and Carmichael comes in and makes he makes no effort whatsoever to, to miss the receiver. Uh, and that's – it's a safety issue. It has to be a safety issue. I know when we're watching the pros, you watch the NFL, and, and the highlight reels are full of stuff like that, and there's no penalties for it. But that's the NFL. Uh, we're talking and about the penalties are coming that way too. Yeah, and yeah. they are. Yeah. Absolutely, they are. Much to the chagrin of, of some of the uh, hard-hitting uh, free safeties that uh, people uh, love and respect in the NFL, they've had to learn how to be a little more hands-off. So uh, again, transitions from a third and long to the Buccaneers to now a first and ten, and we're still getting the actual placement on. Uh, coach head head coach uh, Jason Terrace is asking for a. A quick conversation with uh, head referee Bill Pickerel. Again, one of the longtime referees in our community, and we duly support and endorse the work our officials do so we have the opportunity to play this game of football in a safe environment, which is uh, critical. You know, and, and it's tough being a referee. I was a referee for a number of years, um, and I know what it's like to be out there and to make those tough calls. Uh, and it's easy for people to think that uh, the referee either doesn't know or doesn't care what's going on in the field, but that is absolutely not the case. These guys are out there trying to do a professional job as well. Uh, and they're rated and they're ranked and everything else. So it is an incomplete pass. It is uh, unnecessary roughness. So they're going to go back to the line of scrimmage and go up 15. I've reffed a... Uh, plenty of games but mostly from the sidelines without a jersey <laughs> or a whistle I've I've seen you do that Peter <laughs> there's there's actually there's been a few times I think that we were both refereeing from the sidelines and I don't think either one of us were right at the time it's surprising how well I can see the game from the <laughs> sideline versus the referee who's standing right on top of the play yeah absolutely <laughs> and they're very quick to tell you that too <laughs> so it is first and ten after the penalty Buccaneers right at center field 133 left in the third quarter so far, it has been an opening drive Mustang score, then an uh, answer drive by the Buccaneers in a score, and then it's been uh, a couple of uh, quick outs by the teams, but now the Buccaneers center field, win at their back, minute coming up on a minute left in the third quarter. So once again, we're seeing trips out here on, uh, on the field side. Wetmore's calling some guys over to the, to the weak side. There we go. There's that, uh, that pitch. Toss to Luckless. And he gets met right at the corner. And that was Joel Rickard, I think. I think it was, no, too. No, and I don't I think he's Joel, getting I see, up. No, I see Joel standing up. It's not him. I don't know who it was, but there was definitely a meeting of the minds right at the corner. The, the, the coaches for Mustangs are, are upset about something. I'm not sure what happened there. Maybe we'll see it on the replay. So we see the toss. And he's going hard to the outside. I don't see, oh, we see a little bit of blocking from behind perhaps. Maybe that's what they're upset about. Um, didn't look like there's any sort of rough play, but yeah, there's definitely blocking from behind 68 and 41. Um, now, I don't think that 41 was in a, in a spot to make that play, but it doesn't matter. I mean, hands are on the back and the, the flag is supposed to be called in that case. So it is about a three, three yard gain. They'll be second down seven yards, ball now spotted on the Mustangs 52 yard line the last uh, 30 seconds of the third quarter and right now the Buccaneers have the wind at their back so obviously Mustangs will have the wind in the fourth quarter. This will likely be the last play unless there's a penalty of course but it seems to be uh, uh, fairly slow moving and the clock is running. Wetmore in underneath the center. He goes over the top and oh! gets hit from behind. Ball is knocked away and that is Blake Alain, the D lineman, number 50. They've been close to Wetmore a couple of times, just haven't got there in time before he released the ball. But in that case, it almost looked like Alain had a clear path untouched. So yeah. it's third down, seven yards to we go. We see this here on the, the replay. Nobody even touched him and immediately in. And as a, as a quarterback, you don't like getting hit from that direction. Uh, but uh, Wetmore's big enough to take some, some of the punishment that would maybe another quarterback wouldn't be able to stand back up from. Well, for the backside rush end, that's as good as a touchdown in his world. Absolutely. You, don't, you, don't, see it very, uh, you don't see it very often, and he had a clear shot at a quarterback who didn't know he was there. So third down, seven yards to go, Buccaneers. Wetmore now in a shotgun position. 
He goes right over the top of the touchdown play from earlier. Ball is in the air, and this time, we have a great defense there by number 87, Chris Brown, who's normally been a receiver. He goes to co and cover over the top. So it's fourth down and long, and it's the end of the third quarter. And again, it's 20 to 14 now for the Buccaneers, but the Mustangs will be getting the ball back. I believe we got, I think and we we're going to go down to Vince on the sidelines. Vince. And Jeff, you guys talked about it, touched about it, a little bit on it, about the weather conditions and being down on the field and you talked about the hell of Nova Scotia with the, the players, not enough players, guys going both ways, the Mustangs, a little bit more players to available on both sides of the ball, but it is a hot day down here, 26 degrees outside, it's more like 30 down on the field, so Gatorade and water is a key, the Gatorade more so in-game, the water for the for hydration before the game. So the players definitely need those type of new, uh, nutrients when it comes to the fluids. And I'm gonna just take a walk out to the field and it just, now playing in this league, I used to play in this league, I retired in 2012 and being down on the field in the playing conditions, it is really hot. And you have to make sure that you're hydrated. If you're not hydrated, you're gonna be in trouble come the third and fourth quarter. Back to you guys. Yeah, thanks, Vince. Uh, we actually like to stay hydrated up here in the booth. We're not even playing. There's the punt opening up the fourth quarter. That's caught by number 16, Don Contos. He works his way back to the 50-yard line. A good return, good field position for the Mustangs starting the fourth quarter. There was a huge block by 99, and if we see it on the replay, uh, I know at home he'll be hitting record, pause, and, and, and rewind to see it two or three times because it was here we see the replay. See the punt. Uh, good snap, the punt's up, uh, but we watch towards the end here when, with the run back. So nice reception, running it back, and watch to the left of your screen, just to say, right there, <laughs> what a great block. He's gonna be living that all night long. So first and 10, Mustangs down by an unconverted touchdown, which potentially has a chance to come into play. Comfort in at quarterback, opens up with a fake. To great Roussel. fake. There's the ball and oh. a throw. It goes incomplete to Tory Hicks. I have a rule as a quarterback <laughs> is that if you turn the corner and I can actually run it to you, I'm running the ball. Yeah, I, I, I don't know why he didn't tuck and go, but he saw a quick chance for an extra 15 yards maybe. But he wants that back. I'm telling you, there's nobody there. Throws it in his hands. Nothing there. And another late hit, I guess, is what the flag on the field's about. Uh, so we'll, we'll you see gotta what happens the there. Players. I yeah. mean, like I said, this is a league where you know the motto is we go to work on Monday, so let's play within the rules and let's not, you know. Well, they're, they're talking to the Buccaneers, so I don't know. I didn't see anything in that replay or on the field that was against the Mustangs, unless they had some sort of well, it's contact going, it's down going field. Back. Yeah. Huh. Um, you know, it's it's funny. Vince mentions that he uh, used to play in this league. Uh, I coached the Mustangs for a number of years and I was a defensive coach and Vince played quarterback and Vince was one of these guys that every time we played Dartmouth because he played for the Dartmouth Knights at the time and we went down there and we always ran for the week before we ran rabbit drills we'd find the fastest guy in our team and say run in the backfield and change directions as much as you can because that's the only way we're going to be ready for Vince uh, I've never seen anybody change direction more time than that guy in the field would do well, the penalty was against the Mustangs. It moves them back 10 yards. Now it's first and 20. The ball back to their own 40. Comfort in. Gives the ball to Fox on a carry. Not much blocking or support there. And he gets cranked at the line of scrimmage. However, there could be a face mask call against the Buccaneers. Yeah, I think that's exactly what's happening there. And, and some of these things are inadvertent too. But uh, in, in uh, Canadian football, you've got 15-yard penalty. That's it for a face mask. But he just comes around, his hand slips up on the face mask and immediately lets go and goes to the body, but the damage is done. It's still 15 yards. And I'm not sure if it's not an automatic first down. I believe it is, uh, but we'll have to see how they apply it. I, I, but I believe in any, un -rough play, any rough play penalty, I think, results in an automatic first, regardless of where they were on the field. So it is unnecessary roughness, a face mask. It is a first down, just getting the indication from the referee. So again, Mustangs, this time on the positive side of a touchdown of the penalty. It'll be first and 10. And ball is right at the 55 yard line, just coming into the 14 minute mark here of the last quarter. Mustangs down by six. So those that bought the 50 yard, uh, 55 yard seats have got a great Perfect angle. For 
perfect for this particular play. Comfort, short toss to Roussel. He gets to the edge with room and down the field. He rips off 15 yards. The first down Mustangs ball on the Buccaneers 40. Now there's, an, uh, there's a nice example of some great blocking for, uh, for the Mustangs. Uh, Mo hit the line here we see on the replay and he's got some great blocking downfield and all you need is that step. That's all you need. Keep the defender off just for that half step and, and you can get those extra yards and that's what we saw there with Mo. So first and 10, Mustangs. Offensive drive kept alive by a face masking penalty. Comfort still in pistol. Mo Roussel, a tailback, gets the ball again. And a missed block there by a guard. And uh, Roussel doesn't get out of his backfield. Flags on the play, probably holding. As yeah. the offensive lineman wasn't able to get back to yeah, see the replay the here. Angle. Yeah, he's got it, he had his arm around uh, the, the body uh, of the defensive player. And as soon as that hand comes around the front of the body and, and you're from behind, it's, it's going to be called hold. It doesn't matter whether it was still a tackle for loss. The, the, the hold penalty still will, will be called. So as I mentioned earlier in the, the telecast, uh, Woody Hayes Memorial Field, as we mentioned before, Woody Hayes was a uh, past coach of the Mustangs and passed away a few years ago, uh, was inducted into the Hall of Fame this year for the Mustangs uh, in their inaugural year. Uh, Brian Agnew, we also mentioned Brian earlier, was also a coach with the Mustangs for a number of years as a head coach. Uh, and, and tragically passed away last year. He was also uh, put into the, the Hall of Fame this year by the Mustangs. Uh, so it was, it was a, a very somber event this year for the two of them, uh, two inductees there. So they declined the penalty second in about 13. Comfort goes to the air. He throws the ball to the out. That's Fox with the catch. Hit immediately. He'll go back to the original line of scrimmage. Not much more. It'll be third down at about 10 yards to go. We're seeing a little bit of chippiness out there, Peter. Uh, there's a couple of times there that people are taking a shot at somebody on the other team. Uh, they don't need to be doing it. Uh, we see here at the end of this play here, we'll see a, a block from 87, just a, a little shoulder into the back of, of 28 as goes by. Stuff like that can get out of hand real quick, and, and it's going to be up to the refereeing crew to, to see that stuff and stop it. Well, it's third and long. We saw the Mustangs throw a screen. Now they go toss to Aubrey Ellis. He's in the backfield, but caught pretty easily. You got about four yards, uh, about three yards. It's going to be now fourth down and about six yards to go. Uh, they do have the wind at their back, so now it's a situation with regards to 12.30 left on the clock, maybe punting the ball and uh, keeping it deep. I thought we'd actually see the screen that the Mustangs had. They threw it uh, earlier in the first half uh, with success, and normally on a third and long like that, that's a, a pretty high percentage play to go back to. That or even a draw, you know, I haven't seen the draw by either team. Draw, no. uh, a draw, for those at home, I mean, a draw is set up with, with what seems to be a passing opportunity. You send some receivers deep uh, and you have one running back that stays with the quarterback, but the defense is dropping in, in a coverage and then you give and the running back goes and, and he t can typically pick up some big yards if it's, if it's run effectively. But I haven't seen either team do it, even with a good passing game like they have. And one of the Buccaneers can't quite see from this distance who it is, but he's down on the field. And we see here in the replay, uh, good tackle, but it looks like it was 44. It looked like he landed awkwardly almost uh, on his arm. Uh, perhaps that's who's down. We'll see when they when they are able to move him. I'll tell uh, a quick uh, Woody Hayes story. I actually played here at Triple and graduated in 75, and Woody was our head coach. And we had a road game going to St. John, and. Uh, Woody uh, couldn't make the game, and none of us understood why, and it came to uh, pass that Woody was going back to St. Evex because his jersey was being retired <laughs> from the football team, and the guys on the team didn't even know that he played university football, and Woody Hayes was the absolute terror of the AUS when he played. He still holds some of the rushing records and scoring records. Uh, I think if not, he's in the top two or three, and he played in the late 60s. So up to that point in time, we just thought he was a guy who knew about the game of football. We didn't know the level of talent. He was an American who came up and played center backs and literally uh, just ruled the roost uh, as a running back there. So it, always an interesting guy, uh, and he'd always, uh, always still challenge people to foot races, even though he was up in age because he was still an awfully quick man. <laughs> so it's fourth and long. Mustangs are going. And he's got greenery. Tuck it and go. He's got to get to the first down mark, and he does get the first down. A good play that's worked well for the Mustangs. The drive's alive on a fourth down gamble. First and 10 on the 26-yard line. 
for the Moncton Mustangs. A little concerned at the end of this. It looked like he hit his head. He got up and he, he shook his head too. And we're always very concerned about that sort of uh, thing in the, in the league nowadays, all leagues. But see him coming in and yeah, he, he, he had his body wound up and he hits his, his head into the turf and then there was uh, another defender that comes in too. So hopefully Dan just uh, is fine uh, and we'll see how he plays here in the rest of this game. So first and 10, ball on the 26. Comfort still leading the charge for the Mustangs down the field. Aubrey Ellis with the ball, follows the big block around the corner, gets about four or five yards, not much more, so it'll be second down and about six yards to go. Ball is spotted on the 22 yard line, so maybe seven yards, maybe a three yard gain. I should mention too, oh, here's the, here's the replay. See, yeah, following the, the big guys, they pulled the, from the left side, trying to make some contact downfield, and they do. Uh, and again, just grind out their four or five yards and, and do what they're supposed to do. With the three-man line, pulling somebody leaves a pretty quick path on the backside, and that's what happened there as Aubrey got caught behind. Fullback draw, and he's just a power runner, and he bowls his way through. He should be close for a first down. Yeah, it's within inches, Peter. Uh, we'll wait and see exactly where the referees come up. And they're signaling first down. First down, so under 11 minutes to go. Mustangs drive is alive, we will say, is alive due to a penalty. Uh, so the Mustangs now threatening to score, only down by six, as the Buccaneers missed the convert on their third touchdown. So the opportunity is there for the Mustangs if they keep this drive alive. It is first and 10. Comfort with the ball, Aubrey Ellis, now he goes back to the air, puts the ball in the air, it goes a little outside the grass with number nine, Leslie Green, so it's second down and 10. Yeah, and I'm not sure that Leslie would have been able to do anything even if he caught the ball. The, the Buccaneers were on him fast and he was the only receiver there. So yeah, we see, he tried to grab it with, with his hands and, and uh, didn't quite pull the ball in, but uh, that's fine. He, see what they can do in this. In well, this actually, game. the strength of the Mustangs in the second half is throw an incomplete pass and then come up with a really good run. Yeah, that's, that's, right. been, that's been their offensive set. So we'll see what happens with Comfort. Uh, Mo Roussel is back into the backfield. Had a great second half running the ball for the Mustangs. Comfort at the quarterback. Roussel with the toss to the wide side. Of the oh, field, no. And it's on the ground. And Comfort, with two chances at it, gets it recovered. But there's going to be a loss here. It's going to be third down now and probably about 14. And Roussel is saying, that's all on me, that's all on me. Yes, it was all on you, Mo. Um, we see it come out, and since it's a backwards lateral like that, it's a live ball still. So good heads up play on Dan Comfort's uh, perspective to, to cover that ball up and keep possession. When a quarterback tosses the ball, he has to keep his hands low on the toss so the ball doesn't float above the numbers on the running back because there's a lot going on in the running back's head. He doesn't need to see the ball outside a catching target. So that's a little bit unfortunate. Going to the goes air. Over the top. Oh! And almost a catch there by number 81, Josh Dickinson. But it goes incomplete. And now it is a fourth down and about 14 to go. There's 9.25 left on the clock. And Stevie Cormier is coming onto the field with Adam Shea. So it'll be a field goal attempt. And that attempt will come from about the 28 yard line. Josh Dickinson is another one of those uh, guys that have been around for a long time, since since almost the beginning of the Mustangs, uh, if not from the beginning. Uh, originally from Leo Hayes, but has always been one of those stalwart receivers, and I've seen that kid take some punishment and just pop right back up and go. Well, it was a tough catch to make for him. He gave it an effort, but uh, not good enough, and so the Mustangs have their field goal team in. 9.18 left on the clock, down by six. This will get them within three if it's good. Ball's down, kicks up. It looks like it's going wide, and it is wide. And uh, the Buccaneers are going to give up a point or get out of the end zone. They get out of the end zone. Now he's up the sidelines and gets pushed out of the bounds back at the original line of scrimmage by Aubrey Ellis. So no points on the board for the Mustang after a long drive. It'll be first and 10 Buccaneers. And the ball is on the, their own 20 yard line. That, that is unfortunate, and, and we'll see in the run back here, there was a penalty in my mind anyways. Um, just as he crosses the line of or the, the, the goal line, there's a block from behind right here, right there. And if that hadn't happened, uh, there's a good chance that he would have been tackled into the end zone. I mean, he was on a line. Uh, it's unfortunate sometimes when things don't get picked up like that. Obviously not everybody's perfect, but it, uh, that one was a little, I would think, obvious. No offense, anybody. 
So first and 10, Buccaneers on their own 28-44 remaining in the game, up by six. There's a counter play to Luckless. He gets tackled and back on the field, number 41, Derek Bourgeois, who's had a heck of a game at the linebacker spot. At tandem, Bourgeois and, and, and Cormier, uh, Stevie was in on that as well, as we see here on the replay. And they, they sandwich him, they come in hard on him. Great play for the defensive linebackers. And uh, Sam Morrison, number 98, also in on the tackle. So what a one, two yard gain. It'll be second and long for the Buccaneers ball on their own 20 two-yard line. Mustangs have to be a little concerned at this point, Peter. We've got eight minutes left in the clock. Uh, they're still down by six points. They've got to be able to stop the Buccaneers, and that's going to be offside against uh, Mustangs. Unfortunately, it's a free pass. Oh! The and we're going to go down to uh, Vince Williams. Vince! Yeah, Peter and Jeff, we've got a quarterback change right now for the Nova Scotia Buccaneers, number 42, Tyler Harvey, a product of Auburn High School in Dartmouth. I had an opportunity to speak to uh, Coach Alan Wetmore, and uh, it was more of a, a development type change. He's trying to get his young quarterback some reps to develop, him at, to develop him at this particular level in hopes of going on to playing at Dalhousie University in their program. So not an injury type update for you, Coach uh, Alan. Alan Wetmore will be back in the game. He's just trying to get his young quarterback some reps here in this development stage. Back to you guys. Thanks, Vince. Uh, very rarely you see a quarterback number 42. <laughs> very rare. That's my first thought. <laughs> but good on uh, Coach Wetmore getting his guy some planking. And that was one of those passes that could have been a pick six by number 16, Dom McComtoss, but he didn't get there. So now... It's fourth and long, kicking against the wind. The Buccaneers punt team comes on, and it should give the Mustangs a fairly favorable field position on the transition. Yeah, and uh, I was wrong about the offside. I was sure it was against the defense there a couple of plays back, but it turned out to be against, uh, against the Buccaneers, and, and that's what uh, allowed uh, the Mustangs to be in a position at this point to, uh, to take a punt and perhaps get some good field position now with 7.51 on the clock. So a big punt for the Buccaneers against the win. 7.51 remaining on the clock. Time is in, fourth and long. They'll be turning the ball over. Mustang should get the ball somewhere inside the 40-yard line of the Buccaneers if all goes well. The returners are moving up. They're, they're thinking that against the wind is going to be very tough. There's a flag on the play. It might have been too long. Comtos with the return, had a good return last time. If he gets the outside, missed the block. He's going to get tackled at the 50-yard line, but there's two flags down, so it'll be interesting to see exactly what they were. I think one might be a time count, and uh, that uh, will be interesting. Normally on the other one, we'll see exactly what the, the other flag is waiting to hear. He's talking to the Mustangs uh, captain right now. As we said, it's 20 to 14, 723 left here at uh, Woody Hayes Memorial Field. Ball's being carried back towards what was the original line of scrimmage, so I'm thinking they're going to make them punt again. Too many men? Too many uh, men on the field on 10-man football. They must have had 11. Or 12. Or 12. <laughs> Anything plus 10. So it is fourth down repeated. Both flags must have been for the same thing then. Uh, and I mean, there's critical times of the game where the Buccaneers are not doing themselves any favors with penalties, and this is one. On that punt, they Mustangs would have had the ball on their 50. Uh, now we'll see what the differential will be where the line of scrimmage was be after the punt. He's actually in his end zone against the wind. Do they give up the two points? We see Stevie Cormier as a returner at this point too. Stevie made his bread and butter back in the day as a returner. I think he gets up to two points and runs the clock out. And the boys have to get on him because the clock is not on their side. And no one seems to really get the idea yeah. <laughs> to get on the guy. <laughs> They're playing tag. Yeah. There we and go. he's finally down. So they give up two points. Uh, now Nova Scotia in all, I guess, will kick off from the 35. Still against the wind. So it's 20 to 16 now with uh, just under seven minutes. 6.59 remaining in the game. Yeah, and it's giving up the two points in a case like that, it's one of those those difficult decisions to make as a coach because you're giving up points and now you bring it even a little bit tighter. Uh, the, the extra point's no longer a big deal because now there's, there's even a bigger differential uh, and you're giving the ball back to the other team. So you're giving up points and giving them the, the, the ball. But at the same time, they're gonna be able to get potentially 20, 30 more yards of field position to protect. 
And the last time we saw the Buccaneers kick off, it was more of a pooch kick that went about 20 or 25 yards against the wind. It'd be fairly tough to hang that ball up in the air. Stevie Cormier, uh, as well as Aubrey Ellis, the probably the two most dangerous ball returners are back to uh, get this, as, as well as Dom Comtos, who's had a beautiful punt return uh, here early in the fourth quarter. So the stage is set, 6.59 remaining in the game. Buccaneers 20. Mustang 16 and kicking off after the two point. The Mustangs really want this win for a lot of reasons, uh, not the least of which is it, it, it will elevate them in the standings because it looks like it's a pretty a pretty close uh, uh, league this year. Luckless with the kickoff, kicks it out of bounds. And that's gonna bring a flag on as well. I would, I if it's me, I'm saying push it back and have them kick it again. That's what I'm saying too, but especially I don't know, with my returners. I don't think you can allow. I, I, well, no, actually they're getting the ball out of bounds, so I guess that rule doesn't apply. Huh. Yeah, for those at home, when the ball goes out of bounds without being touched by the receiving team on a kickoff, uh, it's it's procedure actually. Yeah, uh, and now they're actually going to discuss now where the ball gets played. It should be advanced 10 yards to the 50 as opposed to the normal 40-yard line because the kickoff was at the 45. So the referees will get that straightened out. It'll still be first and 10 Mustangs. Uh, no time went off the clock, so we still have the 6.59 left. 20 to 16, Buccaneers up by four. As the offense is coming to the line here, it'll be interesting to see if they're gonna come out with any sort of trips or different formation, but it looks like they're coming out balanced. Well, they still have the... Uh, Kind of the three offensive line H back. Comfort in the pistol situation. Fullback dive, all kinds of traffic there. Not much room for anybody. He, he actually loses a couple yards. It'll be second and plus 10. Yeah, the, the defense was moving forward at the snap. They, uh, those, those middle four or five guys, they're not even looking to see if it's a pass or, or a run. They're, they're coming in to, to squeeze down that, that middle pathway. And we see on the replay, there's there's got to be six or seven white shirts in there. So second and 11, the ball on the 49-yard line, loss of a yard by Chevery. There's the round to Fox. He's got a good block. He's got room on the outside, one guy to beat. And he got about three or four yards, but uh, one guy to beat, he just didn't. And it'll be third down and about nine. Fox hesitated as he came around the edge, almost like he wasn't sure where his lane was going to be. Uh, and we see here in the replay, he's got the ball, he's got some great blocking, and he, he just takes that little sort of stop and then tries to, to do a doopsie doodle, but a great open field tackle. So third and long for the Mustangs. It's, uh, it's funny when you see the different running styles, right? Running backs versus receivers and how they run in traffic. It's, it's a vastly different style. Well, I'd say how receivers don't run in traffic would probably be the <laughs> balls in the air. Comfort puts it out to Nice catch. Fox, and Fox does come up with the reception. Oh, they're, they're saying no. no catch as he didn't control it when it hit the ground. So Love now to see it's that fourth, and fourth and long. Now there might be a flag here. If you, oh, okay, good. All right. The way he flipped the ball away, sometimes referees aren't really excited. Here we see on the replay, it was a great play. Uh, Comfort steps back. He sees his receiver. He's leading him a little bit. Puts it right where it has to be. The only person that can't catch the ball at this point is Fox. He's got the ball in his hands. And he's got it controlled, and he goes down. His knee is down. I, you know, I'm a firm believer that that is a catch. Uh, but, you know, uh, we don't have the, the oh, virtue well, yeah. of, of... Video replay. <laughs> of all the things the Trojans put in the field, they didn't put the big screen video replay in. They didn't do that, yeah. no. So fourth and long, and the Mustangs are gambling. Last time we saw this, we saw that naked bootleg. Comfort goes right down. Now he's going to run the ball. He's got a long way to go, and he got it. Wow. As he just found a crack in the defense and pulled forward. The drive is alive for the Mustangs with uh, 4.58 and counting left on the clock. So those sitting at home, this is called a quarterback draw now. He's not giving it off, but he's doing the same thing we talked about earlier where he's, he's looking like it's a pass. Everybody spreads and drops, and as soon as they go far enough and the offensive line washes away uh, the remaining guys in the middle, off he goes. Great play on that. So first and 10 Mustangs, they're on uh, the Buccaneers 40. Here's a quick toss to Aubrey Ellis. He's got the block and the seam. He's trying to stay on the field. He gets another first down. He gets cranked a little bit from behind. 
Number 44, Andrew Oak, but first down, Mustangs drives alive. It's a uh, ball now spotted on the 37-yard line, 415 and counting left on the clock. Here we see the replay, and you don't often see a running back or linebacker coming from behind to make a tackle that deep. He comes off the block and just hammers him to the ground. Well, we've seen Aubrey actually get to the sideline and get pushed out of bounds. He decided to crank it back, cut it back, and he got the extra yards, carrying the ball again through. Big hole in the middle and still running, still alive. He got to the outside, and he just doesn't get the gas to get Abrey as he has two back-to-back -back first down runs, but great shape for the Mustangs, and Aubrey will come off after two great runs. Mo Roussel checks back in in the backfield. It's first and 10. Ball is now on the 24-yard line of the Buccaneers, and there's a Buccaneer with his knee down, so that'll stop the clock and give the defense a much-needed break. Yeah, well, well, while they're dealing with uh, while, while they're dealing with this uh, uh, break here, just wanted to bring to everybody's attention back home too. We've talked about two entrants into the Hall of Fame for the Mustangs this year. The third is a player, actually, long-term player, uh, Andrew A.J. Gallant, who was one of these. Uh, I've beast. heard some coaches use it. He was a beast. Uh, he had a he had actually had a shot at the CFL. Played uh, played at X for many years. Uh, was a standout here with the Mustangs. Played just about every position on the field. He played quarterback, punter, receiver, running back, tailback, defensive end, defensive back, safety, linebacker. Drove the bus. <laughs> you name it, he did it. So first and ten, Mustangs. Mo Roussel, it's a fake, it's that open boot, he's got trouble now, but open receiver, wide open, and he could get to the end zone, and that's a touchdown, number 23, Torrey Hicks, a well-designed play, and Comfort makes it work, as he got pressure on the run, so he threw the touchdown pass, that Mustangs out in front. Everything worked on that play, and we see here in the, in the replay, he fakes it really well, keeps looking to the left, everybody's standing, he comes hard, sees the pressure, completes the pass, good catch, had to keep it under control and there was a actually a key block in the end zone that made sure that he was getting into the end zone for the score so that was uh, firing all cylinders for the Mustangs. So a uh, Mustangs up by two this conference important as it uh, keeps at least to a three-point spread Stevie Cormier holding Adam Shea kicks it through 23 20 Mustangs 318 left in the game still a lot of time on the clock Peter uh, when you start talking about advantage and, and who's got it for the time and that sort of thing, uh, you would have to say that based on the back and forth and the ability to answer score for score, the Buccaneers have a bit of an advantage here because 318, they can bleed that away, and if they're able to score with a touchdown, it's not going to leave anything on the clock for the Mustangs. Uh, so the Mustangs have to come up big here. They have to turn the ball over. They have to make sure the Buccaneers, first of all, don't score, but you certainly don't want to be losing a lot of game time or field position. So it'll all start for the kickoff, with the kickoff for the Mustangs. Uh, like we said, they do have the wind. It is a fairly constant breeze here, so if that ball can get in the air, and then it's what they call kick cover. Kick cover, that's right. And the big part about kick cover is not to go down out of control. You gotta go down with control, break down, cut down those lanes, because the worst thing you can do to give a, to, to one of these returner guys is a good sort of lane to follow through. So a lot of opportunity and a lot of pressure on both special teams here. Shea with the kickoff. He gets it into the air. It'll be fielded about the 25. Oh, like mishandled. It's fumbled, and that's going to be a help. And now it's the second returner getting the ball back. He tosses it out, which was a good play. But he's under trouble, too, giving up valuable yards and time. And they'll tackle him in around the 20-yard line, 3.07 remaining in the game. Those sorts of things sometimes turn out to be hero plays, and then they're down the field for the touchdown, or they just give up yard well, after yard. Well, they're too extreme. Yeah. Like it, it, there's no middle road. It's either really good or really bad. Yeah, here we see on the replay, uh, mishandled initially, goes through the basket, hits the turf. Good cover by the second guy who was setting up to, to be the lead blocker, of course. Comes hard back, sees that he's got some pressure, and immediately laterals it to, uh, to his other returner. Uh, but Mustangs did a good job of staying downfield and covering. And uh, with the game on the line, Alan Wetmore is uh, not back into the game as the young protege quarterback is in. He's going to put the ball in the air right away, right down the middle. Goes to two rece uh, receivers' hands and also number 41, Derek Bourgeois' hands. 
So it's one down out of four. So the Mustangs obviously are counting on being able to do this three more times. There's the three minute warning, Peter. But I'm just curious to see with the game on the line, understanding Coach Wetmore trying to get some playing time for his player, but there's still an opportunity for the win. And I'm looking at Wetmore on the sidelines does not seem to have, have anything, an injury related issue, although he put his helmet back on. So now second down and 10 yards to go. They run the ball, caught right in the backfield, number 38. Oh, I don't know if it's 38 or 36. Well, the Mustangs are playing with a bit of abandon here at this point. They're going hard into the backfield. They're putting pressure where they need to put pressure. And they, they can smell the victory now. They really can. Two more downs, control this, uh, and they'll take over the ball with plenty of time on the clock and still timeouts all over the place. But all they've got to do is put together two little first downs, and then that'll be it. Uh, D lineman Sam Morrison there, number 98 with the big play. It is third down and 11. Clock at 210. Quarterback goes to the air under pressure and running. And he is in big trouble right now. And it looks like he'll go down as the defense converge on him. It, it'll be fourth down and long against the wind. And on comes the punt team for the Buccaneers. Yeah, they're going to have to punt at this point and, and hope for a good defensive stand and, and perhaps get their offense back in the field. Uh, I mean, going for it at this point would just be silly because it's it's close enough to really attempt a, a field goal. So, um, you know, th they've got to punt it and hope that they can uh, make up some yardage. It'll be interesting uh, to get inside Coach Wetmore's head with regards to the decision on the quarterback on the last uh, potential drive of the game for the Buccaneers. 2.07 on the clock, 23 to 20 for the Mustangs in their home opener. Two more games, both games remaining will be covered on Rogers TV. Again, Peter Como, Jeff Reed, Vince Williams here as, rest, as well as the rest of the Rogers crew bringing you this action on a beautiful day here at, uh, Rock, at uh, Woody Hayes Memorial Field. Looks like uh, the Buccaneers had to waste a timeout because they didn't have the right personnel on there. They're looking to the sideline. I uh, remember the last punt that they did, they had too many guys. This time they had too few guys. They're still getting the personnel uh, in line. So the returners for the Mustangs are going to settle in around their, the Buccaneers 40, 40, 50 yard line. Again, Stephen Cormier now back on a punt return. And I got to tell you, it'd be exciting to see him get his hands on the <laughs> ball. <laughs> He used to be a great runner to watch, and I'm sure he still is, but I haven't had a chance to see him. So we'll see what happens here. They're they're covering, they're trying to cover those shot guys with uh, with their wide with their corners. That's a great snap. The ball is kicked in the air. Tom toast with it. He's going upfield. A little bit of a move. Oh, he's got the ball out. I don't like to see that. It's a good thing he didn't have that stripped see that on the, the replay and I'm sure that if, if his coach is watching that tonight he's going to be giving him some sort of ball uh, handling skills next my week. My rule of thumb is that's the last time you return a punt. Yeah. That's normally what I go with but uh, I mean, watch watch this I mean the, the ball could be knocked out so easily. He was in traffic. Like yeah. It's not like he's got it in one hand and he's got it out like this. I, I just <laughs> very uh, very Deion Sanders ish. Very Deion Sanders. Without the 4 three forty speed I yeah, should say. That's right. Yeah. So offense back on the field, 156 left on the clock. It's first and 10 on the 32-yard line of the Mustangs. I believe the Buccaneers uh, only have one uh, timeout left, so they're, they can only stop the clock once. The key is going to be to stay running inbounds and let that clock bleed away. Well, Harvey Ellis in the backfield, he gets the ball off tackle. A little bit of a hole there for him, closes fairly quickly. He gets about two yards, it's second and eight ball on the 30-yard line, and the clock will be to the advantage of the Mustangs. I mean, they're close enough too that, uh, you know, at the end of this, even if they don't get a first down, uh, an attempted field goal, hey, maybe gives them that three points, that, that's key. Uh, but I think that they're just gonna run three plays here, keep it in, in between the tackles and see what, see what happens with the clock. Well, the clock's running down. Now the 11th man on the field, fullback, straight dive with uh, Aubrey Ellis giving motion on the backfield. Just grind ahead yards. He probably gets four or five. It'll be third down and probably two, I would think, two or three yards. Clock at 129. Now you'll see the Buccaneers probably keep that timeout, seeing what happens with this play. If they're able to stop them here, that's when they'll call the timeout. 
uh, in order to preserve some time because they'll know that the, the punt or the field goal attempt won't take as much time off the clock. So we're at 120 and counting. He's taking his time for the snap, as all good quarterbacks would. Ellis just runs right at the defensive front. Don't think he got first down yards. It'd be interesting to see him in the spot, but I think he's, he's about a yard, two yards short. Yeah. And Buccaneers still haven't called their timeout. I would think that they would have done it at this point, but. So now what do you do as the Mustangs? I mean, you've got a yard to go. Do you go for the field goal? Uh, or do you just run forward and, and try for your first I, down? I, I actually, I just try for the first down. Uh, it'll hem the uh, offense deep and uh, Buccaneers offense have kind of stymied here as the last half of the fourth quarter, especially with the quarterback change. So it's just a matter of saying, do we get upfield? And Aubrey just needs a crack and it looks like he might go to the house. He He's gets pushed out of bounds, close. but he is inside the 10 yard line. It'll be first and goal to go for the Mustangs. 44 seconds remaining in the game. So now the question, the, the, the golden question. Right? I think it needs. That, there's there's the answer. Gentleman football. That is gentleman football. It doesn't mean anything. Just protect the ball, run the clock out. You can do it. You have three, pl four plays left with 44 seconds. So that would be the the perfect the perfect thing to do. But uh, sometimes that just doesn't come into play. Yeah. Sometimes the sometimes an offensive coordinator is trying to work some kinks out, trying to get something done as well, because you never know when this might mean the difference between a victory or a loss later in the season. But let's see what they do. And they're going forward. Sneak. And I wouldn't be doing that with a quarterback. I would not be doing <laughs> that with a quarterback. And you'll see that they came in hard on him. Um, and, and he was exposed. He very exposed. They get down on his legs, and it, and it almost looked a little awkward the way he went down. Um, that's the last thing I would have done, Peter. I, I don't understand that call at so all. So clock is running. Uh, the ball should be snapped probably around the 22, 23 second mark it's managed properly back and uh, I mean when I'm I have the quarterback looking at me and he doesn't snap the ball until I say it's go time yeah so it should be going here anytime another quarterback sneak again and he is in big trouble and now they can just take a knee because uh, when the clock starts there'll be less than 20 seconds left I would have thought they would have taken two knees by now to be honest I, I, I honestly don't quite get this that you're, you're exposing your quarterback the other team is going to be a little upset that you're trying to score on them. Obviously, you don't need to. Um, the same play. I'm getting the signal in from the uh, from the head, the, the, the offensive coordinator. He signaled the same play in the last three times. Now maybe <laughs> Comfort's supposed to take a knee, but he's not. Well, maybe. I don't know. It's hard to say. I mean, you get. Did somebody call a timeout there, Peter? I have no idea, but. Uh, I see uh, Coach Wetmore from the Buccaneers out near the numbers. Yeah, he's, he's not very impressed. So Buccaneers did call a timeout, which baffles me. Um, you know, you, you see this back and forth between coaches like this. The, the co Mustang's trying to score, like we talked about. I'm not sure why we're doing this. And so Wetmore says, fine, you want to play that way? We'll, we'll stop the clock on you and force you to run a play now, um, which is unfortunate. Well, they could have got out of this game without any pain. Now they're, it's, it all goes for naught. They've ran, I think that's their fourth down. No, that was their third. So they still have this one down. That They should be able to, since it was a run play, just let it run out. Uh, and that's what I believe they're gonna do at this point. Well, the ending of this game could have been a lot cleaner and easier than expected, but uh, again, that's why we're in the booth, Jeff. Yeah, that's right. Not down the that's line. right. Yeah, you know, I mean, we've we've had our opportunities to to, to make those calls. Again, <laughs> I've done some of my best refereeing from the sidelines and some of my best coaching from the booth. Yeah, absolutely. It, it never it never seems to be when I'm supposed to be doing it. So uh, even now, quarterback. No, I is running over to the OC, offensive coordinator. So did Riverview call a timeout? Well, I don't know. I am completely baffled as to, to, to why this is playing out the way that it is. Um, but, you know, uh, it, it's, 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 it's their game. Learning. That's it's right. It's a learning process. So it looks like they're going to run a play here. There was a, a timeout that was called, obviously, because the referee's hand is up. Comfort with the ball. Now they have no choice. Willis goes around the inside and through it all, he scores a touchdown. You know, 
maybe we're not supposed to pontificate. There's a I'd big like word for you. But uh, I, I don't, I don't personally see uh, the value in that. But that's you know maybe it's well the the the, neat, the thing about that is I immediately go over to the Buccaneer bench and they all look down to the Mustang bench. Yeah. yeah. And uh, really, yeah, things like that sometimes come back to yeah. haunt you a little bit. Yeah. But hey, yeah. you know, uh, good game up, uh, good game today. I mean, it's it's been an entertaining back and forth, uh, and uh, I I think that both teams accomplished a number of things because they've obviously played deep into their playbook uh, offensive and defensive they were tested uh, and they both were able to come up with some good stops and some good stands where they had to uh, so I think regardless what the score is and, and, and the victory point goes to, to Mustangs likely at this point 10 point differential with only 10 seconds uh, I think that both teams have to walk away with feeling that they've accomplished something well, it was a great second half for uh, both teams. Uh, offensive, both of them got on track defensively. You know, they do a little bit more work. I'm just thinking now that maybe in the league, Jeff, there is this point differential that potentially comes into play. Come it does. Playoff time. It does. So that that could that could be a reason why the Mustangs did what they did. However, having their quarterback run the ball uh, in that situation, if they if they wanted to score, uh, was a, was a bit unique way of getting there, but. Uh, it's a win for the Mustangs, 10 seconds on the clock, 30 to 20. And they'll be kicking off as uh, Shea lines up with the kickoff team for the Mustangs. And for all intents and purposes, potentially the last play of the game. Yeah, we'll have to see how much time they, they run off with the run back. And there's a pooch, a good kick. Gets down to the 15 yard line. Clock is running, we're at eight seconds. This is one of those cases where if a speed demon gets opportunity, and this guy does have the speed, he gets out of bounds with no time on the clock. So a valiant effort by the Buccaneers on the return, but not enough to uh, get the touchdown. So it's a 30 to 20 score for the Mustang, Moncton Mustangs coming from behind for the victory and a great team effort. Yeah, it was a great, it was a great game today. Entertaining, both sides were, were firing on all cylinders when they needed to. Uh, I was pleased to see the, the style of play that both are bringing to the field. Uh, they've been able to vary it quite well, and, and obviously they've got stars that can run and stars that can catch and stars that can uh, throw. So uh, I think it bodes well for both these teams as the season uh, continues to unfold. And uh, we'll go to a break and come back as we wrap up action here at Woody Hayes Memorial Field. Harrison Trimble, uh, the Mustangs 30, the Buccaneers 20. Welcome back to Woody Hayes Field for it's the final now, the home opener of the Moncton Mustangs. Get it done, 30 to 20 over the Nova Scotia Buccaneers. Standing by here with the player of the game, Aubrey Ellis. Aubrey, outstanding game. You went over 100 yards rushing, two touchdowns. Talk about your day. Well, I got to say, honestly, this was a tremendously competitive team. You got to put it out first for them. They gave us quite a game to go for here, but I guess, you know, sometimes just when you have a team that wants to get the job done and knows the role and wants to get out there and perform, you get a W. Second victory on the season. I talked to Coach Ellis at Ter excuse me, Coach Terrace at the halftime break. He talked about the camaraderie between the young guys and the veteran-like players. You're more of a veteran-like player graduating from Mount Allison University. Speak about that camaraderie. Well, honestly, uh, I, I came into this a little late in the season as well. I wasn't there for some of the preseason work. Uh, everyone else put in their time, their effort. They needed a running back. They called me up. I came in, and so far I haven't felt at all at any moment like I've been a rookie or like I'm, you know, an outcast in any way. Everybody has that brotherhood that you should have for a team, and it's paying off for us very well, I feel. And moving on to the next game, it's your second victory. You're um, coming off a tough loss to the back-to-back -back champions, three-time champions, St. John. Um, what does this do for your program? I feel that it really gets our name out there a little bit more and again with you and Rogers you know it really helps us get a little bit more of a, a whole unified uh, sense with Moncton and everybody out there. There's a lot of high school teams here and there's a couple of universities around the area. A lot of people come from Moncton and I feel that it's a good way to get them to understand that 
after you're done university, you know, it, it's not just to the pros and then you're done kind of thing. You're able to come out, you're able to have some fun, you know, enjoy your time, enjoy your brotherhood and, you know, get out there and compete. Have a good day. Thank you a lot. Thanks a lot for this, Aubrey. Go celebrate with your teammates. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. And there you go. Aubrey Ellis, the player of the game, Moncton getting it done. The Mustangs defeat the Nova Scotia Buccaneers 30 to 20. So for Peter, Jeff, and the rest of the Rogers crew, I'm saying so long from Woody Hayes Field.